Hello, I am Daniel Bloodworth. We are Easy Allies, and this is the Easy Allies podcast. This week, I'm joined by Michael Huber. Dune Part 2. Michael Damiani. Uh, Advent Children <laughs> Complete. There we go. Uh, and uh, making it all happen in the control room, we got Don Casanova. Chris Blade Billboards. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Along with Gabby putting up with us. <laughs> uh, Isla's out this week, uh, so yes, She's out. another another one of those contributing factors to things. Kind of, we're, we're trying to figure out technical things, and like we don't, yeah, it's this thing, that thing, whatever. We gotta. I hope fix. she's watching Dune two somewhere. Oh yeah, she's she's taken care of. I hope she's so. taken care of. It's fine. Uh, friends, uh, we are here to talk about what's new, what's news, and what we've been playing. Uh, we got that Nintendo Direct finally. Mm. Everyone's talking about it. It's finally happened. I don't think I'm gonna have to dress up as Wario this year, uh, Damiani. Get wrecked. Uh, remember yeah, the last about. minute uh, delay? <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> uh, with that, we got the confirmation on those Xbox games, the exact games that are going to Switch into PlayStation. Uh, we also got a look at the Elden Ring DLC. So Don't make trailer. me watch it. Hmm? Don't make me watch it. Yeah, you didn't watch it yet? No. You d- okay. That's why <laughs> we have this break. Uh, okay. We what? space for you to Spoilers, watch Spoilers, baby. You're, we're going to be playing it. Hey. You're, you're going to be talking about it. But okay. <laughs> uh, these two have been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So we're going to talk about that for a good while. No spoilers, no spoilers. I have been ridiculously obsessed with Ultros. We'll talk about that. I've got stories from DICE. we got Pacific Drive. But before we get started, we must answer the wrong question. With too many players clogging up those Helldivers 2 servers, which of these PS3 online multiplayer games should Sony bring back to lure players away from Helldivers? Mag, Defiance, that was coming. or Dust? Five one four. I mean, it's Mag. This is the massive action game is the most legendary title <laughs> for a multiplayer game ever made in the history of multiplayer. I mean, this 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 was just ahead of its time. Yeah, it was. It was ahead of its time. It was before memes were even a thing. Like that's not true. The memers wish they had access to Mag. It's Mag. Mag all day. Damiani, any thoughts? Don't know about that. But <laughs> yes, I mean, may, well, maybe, maybe. What are you talking? It was like 2010, have... dude. There was no, there was hardly any memes compared to now. Come on, the memes from 2024. Remember Numa Numa, Numa till like Numa Numa. Do you remember Dancing Banana? Do you remember Dancing Baby? Mm. Do you remember, like, come on, like what? Do you remember the 2000s? <laughs> was Mag the original what? Fortnite? Uh, Chad is wondering, Huber. <laughs> no, it was not. It no, was not. No, okay, okay. No, no. But could we it get would a be Mag now. remaster or remake? That's what we're asking. <laughs> basically, no. Defiance is a funny one to throw yeah. in there because they did that. I don't know how it's doing, but they did bring Defiance back not that long ago. You reviewed it. I reviewed the original Defiance. Yeah, I, I remember this. I didn't this. touch the new one, I, I don't think. Because it was the show and everything, and like as a, as a film and video game lover, I was like obsessed with that idea, Blood. Oh yeah, I kept and watching the- that show until it was done. <laughs> yeah. It was a cool show. Yeah. But, yeah. I, mean, I played the game for a good while. Yeah, you um, did. I remember. I remember vividly. <laughs> but they brought it back in the last year or two, something like that. I remember there being a story for them bringing Defiance back, but I don't know. <laughs> If it's still out there, um, I don't know if it lasted. Uh, Dust 514. <laughs> I remember the name. I don't remember anything about it. Though. It was tied to EVE Online. Remember? It was like they're out there doing stuff on their ships, and then somehow you're on the ground, mm-hmm. and it yeah. interacts somehow. Totally. I don't remember all the details. I totally remember that now. But that question was submitted by Jason Wojnar. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yeah, let's get into the Nintendo Direct, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll tag the Xbox announcements onto that uh, because they basically happened at the same time. Because they started with Grounded Huber, first thing out the gate is Grounded. Great game. Yeah, 
Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, even on the lower thirds listed yeah. by Xbox Game Studios. Whoa. They didn't, they didn't say Obsidian. They said Xbox Game Studios. Yeah. Um, was the footage shown for the Xbox version or the Switch version? I'm pretty sure it's the Switch version. Okay. Yeah, it looks Switch for sure. Yeah, right? it, All right, it, it looks switchy. like it's scaled down for sure. Okay, it looked, a little switchy. Looked, but looks, I knew you okay. <laughs> That's for you, Damiani. That was for you. Uh, but I think it works. <laughs> I think the style works in its favor. I think this this is all right. I agree. It's all right looking. 100% blood. Uh, it's going to have, uh, they said this about all of this stuff, that they're going to prioritize cross-platform play and cross-save. Um, what's exciting about this, first of all, is a great game being available to more people, mm -hmm. first and foremost. But second of all, getting in a room and being able to play something like this handheld sure with other people you you could all play together in the same room like we have the luxury of being able to do our little land sessions sometimes yeah. for for games uh but being able to easily land for grounded on switch is just such a win and i think that's a great way to play that game yeah and that's coming april 16th nice um the um the next one um I don't know if we need to go into it too much, but yeah, we'll probably we'll probably like tap on all of these, and if we want to talk more about them, we can. But the mm -hmm. next one is uh, uh, Ender Magnolia: Bloom in the Mist. It's a sequel to Ender Lilies. Ender Lilies, for sure. Like which I remember that name. I think it's like a Metroidvania, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. side-scrolling action adventure. Yeah. Um, you have this thing, um, kind of like. Um, it's funny, this is the thing that I remember as an example, because I'm pretty sure Castlevania games have done this too. But uh, like Ebenezer, you remember how yep. you're like collecting ghosts mm -hmm. to be your different powers? Mm -hmm. So this is s sort of a sim similar thing to where it's like you you find homunculi, hmm. and those are the like different attacks and stuff that you're doing. So there's guys with swords, there's some hawk guy with a gun. Hawk guy with a gun. There's a wolf that it looked like you could even ride around on. Sick. Yeah. Cool with that. Yeah. Ender Lily's an uh, underrated gem there. En Ender Magnolia. So that's cool. You that's, play as Lilac. That seems so quick. <laughs> that's super quick, blood. Coming sometime this year. Wow. Damian, you ever get into these? I know you got into some of the other stuff. No? No Ender Lilies? No. Uh, what's up next, though? A Ranger, a role puzzling adventure. This is a cool looking thing. Um, it's. Like you're navigating an environment through like slide puzzle things and uh, solving puzzles and things like that. And the the artist is the guy from uh, one of the guys from Braid. Totally Braid vibes. Yeah. Uh, and then they have also got a guy who's worked on Carto and then people that worked on Ethereal and Peraspera. So pretty cool little team of guys uh, working on this. Uh, their new indie team, because this is the first first uh, game from them working together, mm -hmm. it's called Furniture and Mattress. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. And, uh, yeah, they say uh, gameplay takes place on a unique interconnected grid that spans the entire world, snappily uniting movement, exploration, and combat. When Gemma moves, the world moves with her, creating both a playful sense of chaos and a regular stream of small, thoughtful puzzles that twist and play with the central mechanic. That's awesome. Bloodworth, do you think they'll ever, devs, do you think they'll ever run out of ways to have us interact with puzzles? <laughs> Isn't that crazy when you think about it, you know? I don't know. I mean, that is just, just her, like, moving on yeah. the grid is like, okay, I haven't really seen that before. Right. There's just another and then there was new that one, way um, that they were doing with the page flipping. Remember that that one where you could like fold the page over and there's yeah. like another thing on the other side so and cool. make paths that way. It's so cool. Forget what that was. And called. I know you love uh, viewfinder. You know that's friggin' yeah. Viewfinder is sick. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, so in addition to Switch, that one's also on uh, PC, PS5, and uh, Netflix. So spread the love. You'll be able to get that one on your Netflix account. Sweet. Uh, so quickies, we don't need to dig, dig into them too much. Uh, Unicorn Overlord, mm -hmm. uh, that's coming out very soon. Is that Vanillaware or no? Yes. It is. Yes. Yes. Pay attention. Pay yeah. attention. Unicorn Overlord, pay attention, everyone. <laughs> Vanillaware. Strategy RPG. Yes. From Vanillaware. Yes, dude. 
coming out March eighth, which right around the corner. Yes. Um, and then they got oh, a, they goodness. got a demo right after the direct, mm-hmm. and then that that demo is also going to be coming to PlayStation and Xbox on the twenty third, um, which is tomorrow when we're shooting this. But yeah, most of you that'll be yesterday. Uh, five hour demo. Wow. That's what they're uh, legit predicting. So get a good look at that game. Every single Vanillaware game I've played has been great. <laughs> Straight up. Every single one I've played has been great. What about you, Damiani? Are you thinking you get into this? You play Fire Emblem and all that? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, I mean, strategy games are always, you know, like these types are kind of fun to play. So... Um, I will admit I have not really gotten into a lot of VanillaWare's mm-hmm. previous efforts, despite their high praise. Oh, um, everything's great. But we're sorry. I've just been playing Odin's a lot Sphere? of other games. Odin Sphere, lately, dude? You didn't play Odin like, Sphere, Damian? Uh, I'm not looking oh. forward to another like massive game at the moment for uh, for like obvious <laughs> reasons. Like I, I need like a nice like it. palate cleanser, like chill game. You need an and, Uncharted, and, dude. And revving up for like. I need something <laughs> because like yeah, we're like weeks away from like. Rise of the Ronin and the Dragon's Dogma too. I'm like, geez, this does this train doesn't light yeah, up, does dude. it? So it's like, this is, these are great games, but I'm like, I'm not looking forward to any playing any of these right now. I'm like, <laughs> slow, like slow down. Like, oh my god. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories, the first game, the 3DS game is getting ported to Switch, hmm. um, and uh, also PC and PS4. Uh, it's getting fully voiced HD graphics. That's so interesting. And a new museum with artwork and stuff like that. My take is like Monster Hunter is something you get so invested in mm-hmm. for so long term that like sandwiched in between World Rise and Wilds seems like I wouldn't commit but to it's, that. It's but it's different. Your stories is turn based RPG. It's a yeah, different style. Yeah, it's not yeah, like yeah. a normal Monster that's Hunter. That's right. Game. That's yeah. right. That's right. So chill. So it's cool. It's, I mean, it shows that Stories 2 was successful, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, let's port the first one. That's For sure. pretty good. Totally. Yeah. Uh, all right. It's it's time, Huber. Epic Mickey Rebrush. Uh, uh, remake of this game. Nope. Coming this Hard year. Hard no. Hard no. For Switch, PC, I, this PlayStation, the, this is Xbox. The most, this is the most bait trailer for anyone who didn't actually play Epic Mickey. This game is in my top ten disappointments of all time. Ooh, two is even worse. So you're thinking Epic Mickey two? Okay, I was about to ask. Are you thinking of no, two or Epic one? Epic Mickey two. Two is not. Epic good. Mickey two is actual trash. Actual trash. Epic Mickey one is Ooh. almost swimming. These are not good games. Everyone is so I... hyped because they're like, "Oh, I missed it. I didn't get to play this." You don't want to. You don't want to well, play this. You don't want to play this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to replay it now no. because I don't remember nope. it being that bad Dude. when I played it. When it came out on Wii back at game, on game trailers, I remember playing through it. Um, I remember being disappointed that it li- didn't live up to its yep. potential. Like the decision making thing yep. about like destroying or building mm-hmm. didn't ultimately have like the big payoffs. 100%. Uh, and didn't like even drastically impact the moment to moment gameplay other than but, like puzzle solving. Yeah. Uh, but everything else about it, I seem to kind of enjoy. Mm. So that's what I remember. So I'm definitely going to pick this up <laughs> and jump back into it and see if, oh, man, I, it does not hold up. It is as bad I'm, as Huber said. Tell me, Adi, I'm, I am more, <laughs> I am I'm now hyped that this is coming out so that you can re-examine it. That's all I care about now is you tell me but if what, it holds up or not. What was the thing that was... That was the Mickey Mickey is just like, there's nothing about Mickey. I remember being so hyped about like, dude, we're gonna get to play as Mickey and like there's gonna be some epic just like Mickey Mouse lore or like Mickey, like I get to be Mickey Mouse, one of the most iconic characters that has ever been created. There's just nothing. He's just a hollow story wise. Hollow, just a um, Mickey. But there's nothing. And then just the gameplay itself was so average on top of other things being less than average or a disappointment. The overall package was it wasn't quite good enough to be swimming in sevens, but. I was happy at the time that it existed because then, oh, well, now I'm hyped about the next one. Like, oh, Epic Mickey 2 oh. 
can be sure. yeah, that's this. Yeah, what everyone thought, too, was going to redeem it. Exactly. Like, one, okay, I can give one the benefit of the doubt. Like, it was the first one. You know, I didn't really care for it that much. But it was, you know, if I'm being forgiving, like, it was okay. Let's let's all be hyped for the next one. And then the next one was even worse. So then I was just like, dude, Epic Mickey sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's funny here really, because I when I was watching this trailer, like yeah, immediately I thought, oh, they're uh, redoing uh, Epic Mickey. Give this another one. I remembered mm-hmm. it being really disappointing, but I said yeah. it'll be a perfect one to give it a new chance. And then as the, pretty much the whole trailer is just that cinematic, and I said, yeah. uh oh. <laughs> and then they just show like a tiny bit of gameplay, and as soon as they went to the gameplay, I was like, oh no, that doesn't even look as like like the reskin or whatever they're doing doesn't even look as but <laughs> like it doesn't even really look stunning or anything in any yeah. kind of way. So I was like, uh, but I had the same reaction as Damiani where I was like I, I want to give it I'm curious yeah. to give it another run just because I want to I remember being massively disappointed but at the same time it's been so long that I'm like you would guys, I be uh, gentler with it now I don't know would it be simple fun or something I don't you know. guys are so <laughs> right because I love cultural re-examinations so you know if if anyone or, or the uh, masses say like hey Epic Mickey's great I will dip my toe back. I don't think that's another shot. That's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, I'll like, wait. I'll yeah. wait to see what everybody I, says. I will, I mean, get in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 will, I will say that I remember one of the other disappointments being like the all the key art and concept art being shown yeah. in the lead up to it. It didn't really fully capture that essence or even that aesthetic about these uh, these long forgotten abandoned attractions and characters and yeah. Oswald. like Oswald. Yep. It's like yep. uh, that, I mean, yeah, like that was the whole thing about you're gonna discover this lost Disney lore. It's not necessarily about ne- Mickey, perhaps, but you're gonna like find out stuff about all these old things related to Disney, and it's kind of like you know a Disney enthusiast, you know, potential like dream to see like these you know get the spotlight. And in the end, I think it was like held back by potentially the Wii hardware. I mean, it was a deal that they made and to, to bring it on there. So this getting the chance. But I will say when I saw like the gameplay, I'm like, I don't even remember if it ran at 60 frames in the original version. I'm like, it does look like it runs at 60 at least. Mm. But I guess I was expecting something a little bit more drastic yeah. mm. because the cutscene part looked, I was like, okay, it's a cutscene. It looks good. It's That's running at 60. So that, like, that looks very nice. But then the gameplay, I'm like, mm, yeah. it does look like, we we hd me <laughs> like, yeah. well, it's like i don't know maybe i need to see it in action to like <laughs> so like from that part of it when i use the word remake in the the description of this video i'm like this is just like a visual update i don't yeah. feel like like i need to like see it in action and be like all right how does it like look mm-hmm. did they like put a lot of effort in it because this had yeah again you, we all talked about it also like warren spec this warren is warren Spector's Spe- project yeah. like the next this is thing i was a- gonna say man it's like yeah. head maybe unreasonable expectations because deus ex is one of my favorite games ever made so then i have this like loyalty towards warren specter so when he has his name attached to this and it's mickey mouse i'm just like yo sky high expectations but i remember being disappointed Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah so he he was consulting on this Mm -hmm. uh but it's coming from uh, THQ Nordic uh, and specifically Purple Lamp, who did the uh, SpongeBob games. Nice. So the you know the the remastered uh, Bikini Bottom, Bikini Bottom hype, and then the one last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, that's good. And uh, they also said that they're they're tweaking the the gameplay too. So it, advanced mm-hmm. gameplay with new abilities and enhanced visuals. Uh, Mickey yeah. has new moves such as a dash, a ground pound, and the ability to sprint. I mean, a dash, a ground Ooh. pound, and a sprint seem like they're game changing. Yeah. So that does seem significant, actually. Yeah. Wow. I, I actually yeah. totally missed that part yeah. of it. That's pretty interesting. So maybe, maybe, maybe you let me know, uh, viewers yeah. slash chat slash Damiani. What about the visuals, Damiani? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, we're, yeah, as I said, I mean, need to maybe play it or see like direct feed gameplay, you know, not like in a, Know, compressed YouTube, so <laughs> really judge it. It'll but yeah, that, stretch, I did catch yeah. the line about in, about the new gameplay things and whether I mean it's the ones you described are like okay that might make it like fun for mo- like basic stuff that maybe should have been there from the beginning. But I'm curious and I doubt they're going to go anything as drastic as the whole ink system is going to be completely overhauled and actually have more of an impact this time, other than. Remove this wall from a building so you can find the switch in here that you need to flip to go over here and then repaint back over oh. it and like 
like you you can't be like evil Mickey and like <laughs> dissolve people like in dip like in Roger Rabbit. Like, <laughs> that was going through my head when right, I first right. talked about this game. I was like, yo, is like the green ink gonna be like dip and you're gonna like murder? Dude, we need a Mickey Roger Mouse. Rabbit game, Domiani. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Why do I feel like Epic Mickey is about to sell two million copies? Why do I just feel that way? Because it's a license game and it's a Switch. Yeah, yeah, it's about to sell millions. Get ready. Yeah. Yep. And it's been long enough that this one actually can like already appeal now to yep. these younger kids. People like, like I never played kids. that. It's yeah, Mickey and, Mouse. And this is a good, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> it's yeah. Get ready. Two mil. We'll see. Yeah. Um Shin Megami Tensei Five Vengeance. Uh mm-hmm. this is this really is making me feel like I just should not try to play. <laughs> Atlas games when they come out. Like, why should I be looking for <laughs> Metaphor Reef and Visio yep. when I can just get whatever the thing after it right? is? I missed Royal because I, I played I, Persona I, 5 yeah. day one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing with me. I, I never got one. around to Royal. Yeah. And, I mean, thankfully, I guess, I didn't play SMT5, and so now there's a better SMT5 out. There you go. With a brand new chapter. Get wrecked, early adopters. SMT5 <laughs> was also, remember, it was stuck on the Switch, and it was like... Kind of framey, had some issues. Mm-hmm. This is also on PC. They've said it's This is free. on PlayStation. This They've is on Xbox. Crazy. Um, and I think that's the big one. Yeah. yeah. Atlas realizing that <laughs> day one putting on everything like will really help, at least on PC. <laughs> yeah. So there's a new chapter. Um, it's going to have the whole original story, but the new story path that was not there before. Uh, it's also, quote, massively expanded. With new areas, new demons. Never play the original. New music, <laughs> uh, more accessible <laughs> gameplay, an improved <laughs> battle system, new demon experiences. I don't know what that. So means. like Shin Megami five point five, and, <laughs> and greater field exploration. Okay. So it's just a better game all around now. So yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean. At least I don't have to, I mean, I know that this was all but officially confirmed about the, the DLC for Reload, for Persona 3 Reload, but that was the one I was, like, very sure of, like, this is probably not getting a brand, brand new, like, Royal Edition. Right. It, it's very likely just going to tack on the extra stuff, and it's, like, the core-based game, it's, like, that, you, you had to play it anyway, because if they add the female main character, it's, like, need to play through that as a separate thing you know that's that's something you want to like do but yeah i've learned this is the message that atlas is sending loud and clear it's that if you want the most complete definitive version of their game you wait like one year yeah like or like 18 months yeah and you will get that forget like the six month patch window huber mm-hmm. for wait for all these Love big releases patches. for six months with atlas it's like oh. it's like 12 to 18 months yeah. <laughs> for like the, the the full version of the game oh, of all the features yeah yeah if you want to play this game one time <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> wait the, if yeah, the game is 70 thing. plus hours, I'm probably only playing it once f- in 10 years, and then maybe I'll come back to it like 10 years later. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I feel like this mentality stems from older days where they had the, the core consumer base that wanted to like would buy up everything they would offer. So that was the standard thing where you'd put out a first version and then come out with this. And it wasn't just them. Like a lot of companies were doing that. I remember yeah. with the, especially for in Japan, like Kingdom Hearts mm-hmm. getting like in Final Fantasy, getting like those extra editions. It's like, yeah, what? Dude. What the hell? Like, oh my okay. God, yeah. and dude, Don like, Leone was in Japan the when phone. they had the two <laughs> final mix. It was like, it <laughs> <Yep>. debuted the <laughs> week I was in Japan. It was insane. Oh my God. So, I mean, it's just a thing they had been doing, and I think Atlas is, like, the last one to, like, kind of fully embrace, like, maybe, I mean, they, they, they know what works for them, so, but I do wish that there would be a different path forward where if you own the original version, there could yeah. be some kind of discount, yeah, but you will be upgrade. laughed off the face of Earth. <laughs> you will be laughed off the face of the Earth right now if you suggest or hope that's going to so, happen. I mean, I mean, Atlas. Last of Us like, did it. Like, I know, you know, Last of Us really only added, like, Last of Us Part Two only added, like, the no return mode, but still it was a generational upgrade in terms of visuals and everything like i know everyone's like oh it looks the same blah, blah, blah whatever but it was still ps4 to ps5 and you know that was only 10 bucks so yeah. like and it had a whole new mode in there and extra features and atlas should do the same what's up <laughs> 
Except you can't pay ten ten dollars and go from upgrade from your Switch to your <laughs> Xbox version. <laughs> True. But the nice thing about that is though, <laughs> those Xbox PlayStation PC versions, hopefully they'll run really well. Because if it was like optimized the best they the best they could for the Switch, mm-hmm. now you bring them onto something more powerful, then it's yeah. like okay. Make it a little bit more complex, but mm-hmm. chances are the frame rate will be a lot, lot better. Yeah. So, June 21st on that one. June 21st, okay. Yeah. Man, it is the year of the RPG. I keep saying this. Everybody it knows it. It is what it is. Yeah, I feel like it's the same day as something else. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that later. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, next up, one I, same day as I did else, not massive. see this coming. Star Wars Battlefront Classic. Collection. Yo, Yo. Hubert, how <laughs> let's go. Let's. Are we streaming I, this? I are we squatting up? Yeah, hundred percent. Ten out of ten. I never played these. Oh, but I love heck, the heck, yeah, like too. retro online oh, games like this. I'll jump in for a little bit, dude. Land cafe. Anybody? Should we stream <laughs> it from a land cafe? No, like, let's not, let's not try to worry about that. <laughs> load, up, load up the trunks with all the games. <laughs> Uh, Battlefront. But it is oh, kind of shocking. Yeah, yeah. I did not expect this as well. This came out of nowhere. Um, I love Battlefront. I love Battlefield so much. Battlefield is like my favorite multiplayer franchise anything. So when Battlefront came out, I was I was all in. I was like, dude, it's like Battlefield, but Star Wars. Um, and I know the new ones kind of disappointed people. You know, especially with like the pay to win shit. I remember Battlefield Battlefront 2, the new one was actually pay to win. Everybody memes and jokes. Oh, right. The first. Yeah. Yeah. The first one. Everybody memes and jokes like, oh, this is pay to win. This is pay to win. Like Battlefront 2, the new one was actually pay to win. It was was, was like you pay more, you just get stronger things. They patched it, whatever. They changed it out. But those originals are just so clean, so crisp. I just remember like battling on some bridges and shit. Fun yeah. times. I saw yeah. actually some some tweet about that bridge. That, some something that about bridge. that bridge. It brought everything back. It was like Aztec in Counter Strike. It was that same bridge. It was like everyone rushes the bridge. <laughs> Metro twenty thirty three. Okay. Battlefield, right? That bridge, the metro, like the subway. No, Metro twenty thirty three is the other game. I don't yeah. know what Metro came you're Metro. thinking. Operation Metro. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Operation Metro and Battlefield is like the <laughs> one. There's always these choke points. Right. And Battlefront had that. Yeah. Yeah. 64 players. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, they have additional characters and maps. So for the first Battlefront, they've got Java's Palace in there. And then Battlefront 2, they have Bespin... Uh, Renvar a Harbor uh, and Renvar Citadel, Dude. as well as Yavin 4 Arena. Yo! And then uh, they've got um, two other characters, Asajj Ventress and Kit Fisto, uh, who is in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and they've also got Hero Assault, where you play as like Luke and Vader and all of that. Asajj Ventress is like the most like... Hey, let's let's put Asajj Ventress in there to get all the gamers. Let's get <laughs> all the gamers, the Clone Wars fans. Let's get them all. Jeeva, do you know when that? We know when that's coming. When's that coming? March fourteenth. It's less than a month away. Oh my god! Stream, please, please. I'm begging you. Stream. It is now. Can you guess how much it costs? This is what I'm extremely curious about. I'm gonna say, would be fair, 100 percent fair. Do you get, just get the first one? No, get you both. get first you both? Both games. I'm going to say twenty nine ninety nine. I'm going to say nineteen ninety nine. Twenty four ninety nine. I told you earlier, Don. I don't remember you <laughs> guessing. <laughs> did you tell me? You did tell me. It is thirty five dollars oh, and, and one cent. Wrong. Perfect. <laughs> because the the Battlefront two campaign has you play as the five hundred and first Legion. Crazy. So they're charging thirty five oh one. It's excellent. Now it's I coming remember. with a demo of Star Wars thirteen thirteen. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Yeah, coming from Aspire. Um, South Park Snow Day was in there. Sword Art Online was in there. Gundam Breaker 4. They're up to four of those now Jeez. in there. Uh, but next up, again, did not see this coming. Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. 
Monkey Ball's back. It's back. Yeah. It's a brand new game. It's back. Yeah. That's right. First actual brand new one in like, what, a, over a decade? I don't remember. Because the last few yeah. ones have just been remakes or collections. Yeah, they did so a remake. Yeah. They were touting that. Yeah, that this is like first new one. And uh, Super Monkey Ball is like real, like pure Super Monkey legendary, Ball. Legendary, baby. It's fun to play. Like so fun to play. Legendary. It's legendary. It's also kind I of insane. Still, <laughs> Once you get past the first like yeah. five worlds, it's like, oh no. <laughs> shout out to just GameCube I and Dreamcast. Yeah. I just, yes. just want to shout them out. <laughs> it's just good vibes. Just shout out. That's all. Any of you ever played the arcade monkey ball where it has the big plastic monkey ball? You I have like, not you played move the arcade. it with your two hands. It's, so, <laughs> no. it's like a bowling ball sized uh, monkey ball that you control it with. It's so what? awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah. Come on, dude. What? So here it says 200 levels. 200 levels? 200 levels. That's a bit much. <laughs> I don't know because you, like, you see some of those like entire levels. Sometimes in the span of one of these trailers, we had if you know how had, to hop that thing. We had Janet here last week, and she was talking about the dopamine of rolling credits slash deleting your game when you hit those credits. Mm -hmm. And I can relate to that feeling more than anything. Two hundred levels. I don't think it's as much as you're thinking. I think All some right. of those levels is like dun, dun, right. fifteen seconds. Okay, next level. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, there's also a new spin dash move, Sonic the Hedgehog hog style. Spin mm -hmm. it up and let it it's release. Iconic. It's iconic. Sonic 2, spin dash. Yeah. Top 10 video game moves ever. It's now in Monkey Ball? It's in Monkey Ball. All right. Four player co-op, local. And then 16 player online, racing. <laughs> Banana hunts where you're like, yo, 16 players is unhinged for Monkey Ball, yeah. dude. What? Yeah, yeah especially chaos. if there's collision. <laughs> yeah, if what? there's collision, man, that chaos. is crazy. <laughs> what also, I don't world? understand how that works because it, uh, isn't the, like the whole idea that you're controlling the board and not the ball? Yeah, what? But the spin dash kind of plays with that as well, but okay. yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> the banana hunt where you try to collect the most <laughs> bananas, and then there's also robot smash. Where you're like competing to smash robots mm. online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. June 25th, right June around 25th. the corner. You in, Damiani? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, World of Goo 2 is in there. There's some new goo balls with uh, explosive abilities growing and shrinking and all that. They've got 64 levels, Huber. World Jeez. of Goo 2. All right. Four player local. That seems manageable, though. Four player local is exclusive to Switch. So that's crazy. Um, new Fantasy Life game from level 5 coming. That's got four-player online co-op as well. Wait, level 5? Yeah. Nice. Fantasy Life I, the girl who steals time. Okay. Oh, yeah. I at least have to bring this up. The, the idea from this game is that you travel back in time, steal resources, and then bring them to your island in the present. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's almost dark. <laughs> it's, it seems a little dark. Maybe it is dark. Stealing yeah. from the past. But also, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. <laughs> That's all the way out in October. Forget the lot. Oh. What was so that, Damiani? I... Said, for, forget the logic. Just oh, go with yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, another Crab's Treasure. We've been looking at this guy for a while. I played it last GDC. Mm hmm. Um, finally, finally coming out. April 25th, we're getting this game. Coming right up. If you've not seen this before, if you're not familiar with it, this is a... Souls-like crab game, right? Souls-like crab game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Your, your shell gets stolen, and so then you're using trash. So whatever trash you can find on the bottom of the ocean as your shells, and each different piece of trash that you end up picking and using has different attributes, some of them special abilities, all that. Could be a bottle cap, could be a soda can, could be all kinds of different things. Uh, Hubert, you know what's nuts? Hmm. Uh, yeah, coffee mug's one of them. That's my main. I did not realize this. This is a real thing. What? Real hermit crabs yeah. are going around using little bits of trash like this for shells. Wow. My wife showed me this YouTube video. This yeah. guy that goes out there... And 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 presents the collection of real shells to these hermit crabs, 
so they can stop living in trash. And they just hop into one. And then they, they take a minute and they find their favorite one and they go on their way. Yeah. Like a dragon infinite wealth, Jack. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. This is a real a real thing that they're bringing attention to through their, their cute little somewhat difficult video game. Uh, this game will be a quote-unquote 10 out of 10 if the combat is sick. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I played the last GDC. Yeah. I like what I played. Um, I was just like one level, one major boss fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss definitely takes a few tries. Good. I'm not good. professional like you, but you know, <laughs> oh we'll see. God. We'll see. Just from the trailer too, the story <laughs> actually looked kind of interesting, and like the yeah. characters and everything. Yeah, you sympathetic were, crab. It was. <laughs> it looked like a little bit deep. It was interesting. All right. Yeah. Not expected. It wasn't just like you know surface level goofy stuff. It seemed <laughs> like it had a kind of like a deep plot. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I'm in for for a crab game. That like there's a lot of a lot of character design going into these creatures. Here. I always try to play every, and it's impossible because there's so many. But I always try to play every. Metroidvania and every Souls like I just try to, I try to get in there. We'll get you on you know? that April twenty fifth. Yeah, Umami Magic. You can also cast Umami Magic. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't get examples of what you could do necessarily. Oh, and that's on Game Pass as well. Clutch. It's a uh, Switch, PlayStation, and PC. Clutch. Uh, Penny's Big Breakaway. Uh, you heard me talk about this just a couple weeks ago. That yeah, dude. February fourth podcast. Go check that out if you didn't. If yeah, you didn't catch that dude. segment, the most bossman game that ever bossmaned. Uh, maybe. I think. 100%. I think Kyle will be into this. Oh my! Did you, did you catch when this is out? Obsessed. Did you catch when? This I is guarantee out? he's obsessed. Do you know when this yes. is out? Uh, no. Yesterday. <laughs> it's already Dismissed out. It. It's out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I question that decision, but yeah. Why? Why, Damiani? Why? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I know people are looking forward to that release date and felt like they were like it was time to announce it. But I feel like the shadow drop just kind of was a little too sudden and abrupt. Mm. Um, also, the timing right now. I mean, I guess there's like no good time. I was about to say like, yeah, maybe stay away from anything right now. But it's, no it's just time. I know. People are looking forward to it, and I know people can play multiple games, but this week has just been, like, swept up in other stuff, and I feel like, yeah, like, I'll have to remember to come back to that game at some point, and I don't know. Like, I, I feel like maybe waiting to... Uh, uh, seeing this go on, yeah. it was, like, early March starting to now fill up because late March is already getting crowded. It's, like, maybe the, like, first few weeks of March, it's like, okay, no, how about April? It's, like, all right, that's maybe too far for some people. Yeah. I don't know, but it, like it looks, you know, it looks fun. Um, if it's not that terribly long of a game, I think actually maybe that's fine. But I don't know. Like maybe I'm wrong on this one with the with like the shadow drop. But like I would have been like, hey, it comes out like tomorrow or like it gives some people some time. But like we had like what well, we had today. We had like the Final Fantasy demo drop that day, um, and then you know we had like the reviews go up today. They couldn't have known that, but it's like I'm sorry. But like starting yesterday, seven like for seventy two hour window, it's like Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth and Final Fantasy Seven and nothing else. Like good luck, like good luck yeah. going against maybe, this title. I can storm see right their now. logic maybe of like, you know, you have your hundred hour game, and our like ten or fifteen hour game is a nice complement to it. So to me, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, that way. Also, I wonder. Like, I, I love to have a smaller game balance. Because the word on the street, one. word on the street was that this got delayed because of the Xbox shenanigans. Hmm. So, w was it supposed to have shadow dropped last week? Yeah, probably. Oh, right? Yeah. They probably didn't change the trailer or anything. Yeah. Um, well, they yeah. So, I think I think that yeah they got because like when I played it when I brought it to the preview I'm like this feels like a whole game. It feels like I got the whole game in my hands right now. This feels done. Like there's some polish and tweaks that they could have done with it, but it's like I, you know, so it, it's interesting. It's like, oh nope, here it is. Yeah. Um, and I've already started to yeah. see people like with speed running videos online. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. You guys, are right. way more advanced. I struggled with just the basics. <laughs> speed runner hype. Yeah, I'm curious though about to get my hands on with the game though. Like not to like totally down on like the, the timing of it because like it's great that's finally out but also like yeah people who are playing it saying like this is you know how maybe 3d sonic yeah. should take a closer look at how they're doing things in this game because they get what makes potentially 3d platformers about momentum versus speed like which is like more important like sense of speed or sense of momentum right um and how maybe the more recent 
the 3D Sonic games just don't get that. Other than, I mean, Frontiers is different, but before Frontiers, yeah. you know, it was kind of like always going back and forth with the 3D Sonic games. And maybe we could use something like this, you know, to infuse it. But obviously, that this is their own thing. So this is something, you know, that they could build off of and, like, you know, Maybe this is a better path because this was the the Mania team, correct? Yeah, I'm not misremembering, right? That's them. So Sega let this let them go. It's like you could have had something like this, but so be it, you know. Yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, another cool little one, uh, Pepper Grinder. So hyped on this, dude. Yeah, I've 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 seen this. I there've been multiple chances to get hands on, and I just haven't had it at the moment to really do it yet. Can't wait for. There this. is a demo. They've had a couple of demos before, but there is a demo now for sure on Switch. Can't wait. Also on PC. Um, this game just looks so great. Hell yeah! Like dude. the art style is, is, is fantastic. Like it's it's like a pixel art style, but it's yep. not like a pixel art style that looks like a Super Nintendo game or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's got a lot of depth to it and a lot of big characters. Yeah, I'm um, hyped, dude. Yeah. And it, it it it's a game that looks like it feels good, so that's why I want to get my hands yep, on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just I can't think of any games where like digging like that is bad, mm. you know. Yeah, like I with, think of when Ori Dig. did a thing like that, right? Yeah, yeah. that SteamWorld Dig and Super Mario Brothers Two, obviously, just like uh, Mario Galaxy Two, the like drill thing. Yeah, Drill Dozer back in the day, which is what this is probably yeah. referencing the most. Yeah, it's like always awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Don Don rewind that back up. Pocket card jockey right on. Are you pocket card jockey? Yeah, what jockey? the hell, Do you Don? Know this about is this? I'm not. Actually, this was recommended to me, and I downloaded the demo because I saw it's available. Dude, but I hadn't yeah. had a chance to play it yet because I was busy playing Operation Galuga. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this d downloaded, oh, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to try this yet. People have recommended this to me. So I guess it's a, a long a few, a few. I don't know if this is the th at least the third one in the series. but uh, Yeah, it's a remaster, apparently, Don looks uh, sick. from Game Freak. Um, originally, it was on... DS or 3DS, I don't remember which one, but yeah, it's a fusion of solitaire and horse racing. Amazing, I'm in. So Sign me up. I in the past haven't been a huge fan of solitaire, so I'm nervous about that side right. of it. But I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna... <laughs> There's still a gambling element, dude. That's all that matters. But Don, talk <laughs> about talk talk about Galuga, because Galuga was in the montage. We had we had Snufkin, we had Tales of Kinzera Zao, which we talked about recently. We had the Demon Slayer Mario Party game was in the montage. Yep. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance is coming to Switch. Kingdom Come, okay. Pentiment was in. They put the Pentiment into the montage. That's out. That's out now. Nice. Don't uh, skip. Don't skip. Another Shadow Drop Pentiment on Switch. Don't skip. But Don, talk about this Operation Galuga demo that they got. Yes, I'll say so far so good in my opinion. Look, I love Contra. Contra is literally one of the games I, that's like one of the first video games I my eyes ever saw as I go as like a three year old or something in a supermarket. I remember I was seeing Contra at the front entrance, right? So high stakes of this thing coming back. But look, I think. I don't think it's too early to say it after playing the demo. Contra is back. Like, this felt okay. really good to move around. The shooting felt good. You've got a dash with a right uh, trigger. You can hold down to lock in place. Then you rotate around your aim everywhere. So they put in everything you need for a run-and-gun shooter, sort of something to satisfy everyone. You know, uh, the double jump felt good. Weapons felt good. Everything felt good. Uh, the graphics when I was first visuals playing, are okay, yeah, Don. Huber didn't like the visuals, and I was nervous about the visuals when I saw it in the trailer. But when I was actually pl uh, playing it, I was enjoying it on handheld mode a lot. But then Huber came in and saw it in handheld mode, and he didn't think it looked so good. So I'm not sure what you'll think. But uh, mm. for me, I don't know. The backgrounds have like a combination of it has a whole bunch of 3D, you know, objects. But then in the far distance, there's like 2D palettes also. But stuff it didn't look gritty enough, Don. It didn't look violent or gritty enough. Here's the thing. Okay, I need okay. violence. You got to see more, Huber. You got to see more. There's some gore. Okay. There's okay. legit gore. I That's mean, by gore. the first level that end boss that they give you in this demo there's some legit gore in it okay it all brought right a big smile to my face in fact i did <laughs> not see it coming so <laughs> give it a okay. little bit of a chance yeah you've sold me 100 percent. It, it uh the, but the background kind of like you know even though you're always on a 2d plane uh things kind of like shift around a la what's that game i 
Pandemonium. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and lots of other games, but we got to give a shout out to Pandemonium. It does that 3D background, you know, fake rotation sort of thing, which is kind of neat. But um, I don't know. All the weapons felt good. It seems like this team, like, like obviously got what was great about all the old Contras. And something real important that I wanted to touch on, uh, Contra, the difficulty, right? Often yeah. sadistic difficulty, often yeah. uh, unenjoyable, un- sort of unbalanced <laughs> uh, difficulty. It seemed like the difficulty was in a real good place on this point and this one. Not too easy, not too hard, but it was ramping up nice as well, just just in the first level. So Sick. it seems like, for me, this is very satisfying. I would say just jump on that demo. you got to try this. That's a sell, dude. Yeah. Don, I trust you with my life, bro. I'm I, in. I've is, it, is it $40 satisfying? That's the problem, Ooh. but it's a little pricey, <laughs> right? It's a little pricey. But I'll tell you what, honestly, playing through that whole demo, it feels like if it continues at that level, which I think it will, it will be worth it. But I mean, you could okay. see they put a lot into this. It, Don, this are there, are, uh, uh, yeah, I know, uh, I'm thinking of uh, Double Dragon Gaiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just played through that recently. Being a, a steep cost, but there was so much to invest in mm. and, and so much progression. Does this Contra have that? It's hard to tell off of just the demo, but I'll tell you this. First of all, the level, the first stage that they let you try is quite lengthy, especially for a nice. Contra, which was nice. So it had quite a few. I think there was at least four uh, save points because they had a mini boss. So I think they had like a sa- one save point between the beginning and the mini boss, and then they had like another one, you know, somewhere in between uh, getting to the final boss of the first stage. So it's hard to say. You do get like a couple little perks that you can, uh, slots for perks you can pick in each level and stuff like So I'm sure there's some of that stuff kind of like guide in that you're going to be unlocking and stuff Mm -hmm. remains to be seen how much replayability i mean i think it will have replayability just because you're trying to with contra it's always the perfection kind of thing you want to get through the stages without yeah taking a lot of damage and all that and falling but uh so i would say you know right now on sale good thing to point out to chats mentioning right now pre-order sale you know so you're going to get 10 percent off check out the demo Sick. If you love it, I, for me right now, this feeling honestly, because I'm a Contra pan, fan from the past. Yeah, so I've legendary been for this, franchise, and it's been for a little while, right? That, since we've had a super solid Contra 2D style, so you know, fingers crossed. But this is feeling quite good. I would say my uh, yeah. expectations are higher than they've ever been off of seeing, you know, much higher than when I had just seen the trailers. Now that I've got my hands on it, sick. I'll put it that way. Yeah, shout out to Contra Operation Galuga. Hell yeah! Nice. Uh, next up, we got five games. And one announcement, Huber. Five? Is it the second thing? Dude, the hype from this... We're not playing the music, Oh, Huber. no. Is this but what I think it is? This troll for to Bloodworth's soul? How is this a troll? Freaking rare. Putting out five games yeah, on Switch oh, Online. I was talking about Mother 3, man. Oh, that's a different... That's a different... Well, not yeah. necessarily a troll, but they put that's that out. That's a troll to you personally. It's they a spite to you. They put that out you. on uh, the they were Japanese like, shop, yeah. They're like, oh, our old CEO, let's F him over. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, but yeah, so we got. Uh, th- but this this thing was hype because they're playing like the like the old Killer Instinct music, <laughs> and so it just like really ramped up into tight, everything. Tight, tight. But yeah, Snake Rattle and Roll on the NES. Which Blast is, core! Yeah, one that I was not super into. Blast, Blast core, core on the N sixty four. Let's go. Killer Instinct on Super Nintendo. Uh, RC Pro Am on NES. Which yeah, I dude, so yes. good. I saw that too. Yeah, so good. Uh, and then Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs, which they're fine. Yeah, it's fine. Not great. Nice graphics. Not great game. Yeah. Um, uh, be interesting. I don't because I don't think the original Battle Toads is on there yet. So it'd be interesting if they got that on the NES. But a nice, nice little pack. Tommy on you, dude. Blast Core hype. Dude, I'm so happy people can play it. It's not an easy game. Yeah. It, it takes a little bit. There's so many vehicles you have to learn how to control, but uh, that stick controller. with that game if you can, because that game goes places. <laughs> yeah, crazy <dude>. places. <laughs> <laughs> I think it came out the year before, right around Armageddon. <laughs> 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 might be a reference. <laughs> I'm so pumped to try this. People have been recommending this game to me game game for since like I remember the GT days, oh. and I've never had an opportunity to try. Oh, it. So yeah. I'm actually extremely pumped for this release. Yeah, dude, Blastcore is like top five rentals of all time. Mm. I will I will die on that hill. Now I rented this game like six times. The one thing I'm curious about, and I don't know if Chat's gonna be able to be quick enough to to get this answer in real time. Um, 
the Super Nintendo version of Killer Instinct. That's what I was just going to say. That's what I was just going to say. Boy. I don't know that that's what been re-released, it? has it? That was like never on a virtual console kind of thing. Rare Replay, I don't think, had it. They had the arcade versions of Killer Instinct um, with Killer Instinct and Killer Instinct 2. I don't think we've seen like the N64 Killer Instinct Gold mm. either. Yes, this is true. Chat is confirming. Oh, well, I was just going to say that the Gold, obviously, at first when I saw this yeah. announcement, I don't know why, I just assumed it was Gold, and I was mm-hmm. like, went, hit the ceiling, so <laughs> pumped. And so, like, you know, still nice that it's the Super Nintendo, but dang it, that would have been sweet if they had the Gold yeah. N64. Gosh, that would have been good, because that's 100%. I don't know. I played this one just a tiny bit just uh, the other morning. It was like, felt okay, but... You know, I'm not sure. Maybe this is a really good port. It looks great for Super Nintendo, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, they did, they did a great job on that. I had I had friends um, that had the the cart back in the day, and so yeah, We'd go over to their place and and play it quite a bit. Um, and then neighbor kid, I was able to yeah, I was able to get gold uh, on a 64 and and play that one. But I didn't have I didn't have the cart myself. Just had you know those chances to play it with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then wrapping it up. Uh, Endless Ocean Luminous. Talk about a, a, a game to bring back. So classic, bro. Right. I was so... This is like probably like my first like 3D diving game was Endless Ocean. So sick. On the Wii. Um, and there was a lot of rumors going around about this. Somehow this thing had leaked. Um, and people were calling it like a, you know, a remaster or a remake or whatever. But at least from what I can tell, this feels like a new game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not only does it feel like a new game, it has 30 player online. What? <laughs> That's yeah, this so is awesome. For, for this game, what? there's online. I, I don't yeah. want this. <laughs> what, what do you mean? That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I love it. it. <laughs> we'll get to the shots, man. But there's there's too many people in these shots. Yeah, I like to. When, if it's I'm just swimming, a bunch of screen names floating around. If I'm <laughs> in the deep ocean. Here it is. It's like. Meditative, right? I don't know. When exactly. You have Thirty other people, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of people looking around. That's weird. Doing selfies, like going through ships, and, and like I don't know. They, they, they got some bruiser of a shark in this game. It, too. Honest, Damiani. It looks like they're going on a freaking MMO raid, bro. <laughs> that is the vibe I get yeah, here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was like, is this like just like ocean MMO <laughs> the game? I was like, all right, uh, sure. I mean. I don't know about like the atmosphere though, <laughs> uh, considering like the original one um, and the vibes they're going for. But I'm sure they're still like single player and like go yeah. out right blood. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure the yeah. single player. player yeah, you, know, you see enough of those people. shots. Yeah, but I'm almost like worried how it's like the footage with the multiplayer looked kind of rough, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I don't know. Why I'd want to like you know play that way for this type of game. Yeah. It's like, I want to just be like immersed in those, you know, underwater environments and just, uh, you know, Jeez. you know, chill. Just have some nice chill music playing. Throw the Wii, old Wii shop music in there somewhere for me too. <laughs> you have to, like you have underwater, to. <laughs> like yeah. remix. Uh, it's just wild to see this direct and, you know, it's not new to this one, but mm-hmm. it's, it's a trend of re-releasing your game. Mm. to you know 150 million switches right sold or what was the number <laughs> oh not quite 150 yeah. but yeah yeah it's like so, 130 something million yeah yeah you just re-release your game and well i mean that's you have 130 like, 40 like million I said, people like, it's like, i don't right, know if, if that's we sell a, a million like I, i'd be curious to do a comparison because i feel yeah. like it's it feels like a new game even if it were re-released like yeah the, the amount of like work they'd have to do to like upgrade the the models and everything is yeah because they say there's 500 species of animals yeah. in this thing, along with uh, extinct animals and mythical creatures. Yeah. So It just seems like a really good business move to mm-hmm. re-release any game right. on Switch. Right. Just period. It doesn't even matter what it is. If it hasn't been released in the last decade, like put it on Switch and hope you sell a million copies, which out of 130, 40 million doesn't seem that hard (laughs) i know it is hard but you've got pretty good odds yeah um along with all of the people that were chattering about this there's been a lot of chatter about the uh the the successor the switch 2 Mm -hmm. getting 
quote unquote delayed. That's I don't right. know if you can delay something that hasn't been announced, but delayed to 2025. So are you dressing up as Wario then, Damiani? Was that the deal? I don't even remember. I hit the, this one on the, the head tonight. I literally. I was like, "There's no way." It's still not even official. There's no nobody way. said any date. It, one, it's yeah, it's it's not official. And even if this is true, it's like this was supposed to come out this year, but for a certain reason, undisclosed. Still, it is not making it this year. So, mm. your guess is as good as mine. This will be the main topic of solo queue on Sunday <laughs> that it. we were going to be diving into. This as well, Check like what we think is going on with it. But I mean, it could be anything from like. Can you give us a tease? Like, having trouble securing I mean, a part? Yeah. Damiani, I mean, it's does first party for software GTA, need more time? GTA 6, right? Can we talk about I mean, yeah. So, like, the big announcement is going to be it's going to launch on GTA GTA 6 is going to launch along on every platform and Switch Guys, 2. 15 minutes like, they ago, want to ride that. 15 minutes ago, for no reason, I was like, I need to ask him if we can just talk about GTA 6. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. 15 minutes ago, in my brain, I was like, can, I'm, I was like, I'm going to ask him if we can just talk about it for no reason. Now we have a reason. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll get into that, but also, like, why, uh, what are they doing the rest of the year? We got this, this partner direct, but it's like, still got six months of the year that are relatively unaccounted for, and maybe more now if it's being delayed to early next year switch too so it's like does nintendo just you know what are they doing are they so waiting for gta that, 6 damiani to launch nintendo with it is, nintendo brand is new not. brand new no, console launching not, with gta 6 you just wait for whenever strategy. that is no not their strategy no no but they do <laughs> no. need more time to 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 uh animate uh Mario's new like talking boots or whatever they've got this time. <laughs> Yo, Mario's talking boots or boots at all are the best. Mario three the boot is the culmination. <laughs> it's it, I'd be curious to know because you like it happens a lot, right? Like Nintendo delays things mm -hmm. quite a bit to get quality up to par. Like I, I kind of want to know what are those blockers? What are the things that like, dude? Tears of the Kingdom not this year. Don't know when. Not this year. You know, on it. I mean, I I don't know as much as you, anybody. But <laughs> from my perspective, it's you're almost the highest selling system of all time. Why do you need a new one? You ride it out until it's dead. Yeah. You ride it out until the wheels fall off. Like Switch is fine right now. Switch is killing it every the year. It's going against way more powerful consoles already, and it doesn't even matter because it's just doing its own thing. So why would you come in this year if you still have momentum and you're still killing it? There's no reason. I mean, but the momentum is slowing down for their own sales numbers. It's still doing very good numbers, but it is showing irrevocable proof that it is slowing down. Mm -hmm. And you don't run it into the ground because you don't want to l risk losing all your momentum because then consumers either A, tire of your stuff and like, all right, you guys are like, it's not exciting anymore. And, you know, they open their eyes like, oh, I'll move on to something else. And along that lines, B, other competitors seize that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like a PS5 Pro comes out before Switch 2 now. It's like they get to be like, yo, check out our brand new shiny hardware. And if they actually, you know, have new games, I mean, there's reports they might not have any new first party games, but third party games. It's like they obviously can start touting that. And it's a... There's that sweet spot I think they're trying to find of where do we want to transition into the Switch 2. And it sounds like they had that figured out, but something, we do not know what, if this is true, is causing them to make a slight bump in that plan, that time, that timeline. <laughs> so very, very curious what it is. Yeah. GTA 6. <laughs> you just wait. Uh, but Damiani, there's also a Pokemon Presents coming up on the 27th. So that's right around the corner. That is true. We'll talk about some Pokemon games yep. next week. So that's going to be on Switch for sure. Yep. So Blood, what do you want Maybe to see PC? out no, of uh, GTA 6? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Florida man, dude. What do you want to see out of that? One thing, man. One thing, One thing? I that you desire. I don't know. I'm not a GTA guy. I don't know. Uh, jet skis, of course. <laughs> All right. Jet skis. There it is. <laughs> what about you, Damiani? One thing out of GTA 6. What do you want to see? There better be a scene where you can like ride on uh, what is it, Crocs or Gators that are there. <laughs> I mean, Whatever, in whichever Miami one both. it is, you're gonna. I want to. 
Okay, then both one foot on each. <laughs> just like chasing so like someone down. I want to like, I want to, I want a croc chase, baby. Oh like a high speed croc chase. <laughs> <And that way. laughs> all right, I'm cool with it. Uh, all right, sort of related to the direct, but kind of its own thing. Uh, we got the confirmation on those four Xbox games. Yeah, which last week was hilarious because it's like. Phil Spencer didn't want to name them, I think, because what the Nintendo th- Direct deal probably yeah. like starting grounded off. Here's an Xbox game. Whoa. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. So I, I think that they were, you know, they had that deal done. They didn't want to like ruffle feathers with Nintendo. Yeah. But it was so funny because it was like immediately people w- that were in the know were just like, it's these four games. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the four games. <laughs> like, Pentiment. High Fire Rush, Grounded, Sea of Thieves, after that direct, all four mm-hmm. of those games were confirmed yeah. by Xbox. Not all four of those are coming to Switch. Pentiment and Grounded are coming to Switch. High Fire Rush and Sea of Thieves are coming to PlayStation. High Fire Rush not on Switch. That's a... For now. For now. So far. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Rum- rumor is High Fire Rush, they needed to be on the successor to play right or something. Nice. But uh, Hell, That's good then. You release that game three separate times. As it deserves to get hype, three <laughs> separate times. Let's go. But uh, yeah, so Pentiment is also coming to PlayStation. Grounded is also coming to PlayStation. But so far, Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves are only PlayStation. Great. So I think that's great. You know, we talked about it last week or the week before. Yes, Just, both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if if your console gets a game six months to a year before the other one, that's enough to me. If you are some huge loyalist console warrior, whatever, the more people that get to play, the better, because then we get to talk about it more with each other, and there's no like crazy animosity. It's like, yo, we all have access to this game. Let's talk about it and critique it in a friendly manner because we all have access um and and i just think the early access going forward might just be the new exclusivity maybe you know this console gets it six months to a year before and then it'll be there and uh pentiment they're also doing physical cool too so yeah pentiment is awesome such a good game yeah loved pentiment all right it's time for me to stop talking for a minute because it's time for both of you to tell us about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've, no spoilers. I've done burned an hour on this podcast already talking about Nintendo, so no spoilers. Don't get into the spoilers. Can we it's... talk about Queen's Blood for an hour? <laughs> Not quite, no. <laughs> um, I don't want to, you know, Isla and I always joke about, <laughs> we always joke about the movie Parasite, how before that came out, it was like, quoted as the best movie ever made blah 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 the hype was like too much and then we saw it and we were like it was good it was great but like not the best movie ever made like they were saying so like hype can be kind of dangerous um but final fantasy 7 rebirth is like love to my soul it's just the reason I'm on this planet right now is to be able to play and share the love and hype for video games like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is the reason to be alive in 2024, <laughs> straight up. Take it away, Damiani. Mr. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just cannot state how massive this damn game is like I, I just could not believe how much stuff i was coming across in this game i was like as i was getting further along like, surely we we were gonna like hit a stretch now where things are just gonna kind of like more be like a beeline like <laughs> yeah. we're like we're gonna like we're gonna like start like getting some like you know focus here and like not that it like needs the focus like it's they, ha- they had to run out of like money or budget or so, like some reason this train's gonna end it's gonna get back to like when i'm like what like i think it's gonna go it's like nah we got more we got we want, want many games like i don't i can't lost count of how many mini games <laughs> were in there i'm like 
but what the hell? This is a mini game. <laughs> this quest is a mini game. That's a mini game. It's like someone's like, I don't want fetch quest. So like, yo, you don't want fetch quest in your side quest? Here are mini games for every quest. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Why do you keep doing this? Yeah, this is the quadruple. A. It's like Jesus, and like the best thing about it is that yes you can skip all of this stuff if you don't want to do it there is always a path through the larger open environments if you just want to stick to a story focused playthrough if you that really suits you but i was just finding so much meaningful stuff not just like rewards but like the activity itself being fun uh, or enjoyable and sometimes the story tacked onto it as well mm. that's why i said in the review the proto relic quest line there are some parts of it in some of the areas because it's a recurring uh quest line that keeps coming back that like starts fleshing out certain characters events stuff from the first game gets like fleshed out through that and it's like dude like you put that there and that i mean it's sick that i did this but it's like to tell people to do this like they're gonna miss out on that stuff that's like sick that that, that i got that development there and obviously like the ultimate payoff for it, like, you know, do it. There's like, there's so many things I want to talk to you about we won't. that I still can't we won't. talk to you Don't about. Worry. And it's like, what? Like, I, I, I just want to like see other human beings. Like we have these reviews out there now. I just want to see other human beings play some of these parts. They're like, there's shit in here. And I'm like, please, I just want to see someone else experience this part so I could like see their face when it happens. I'm like, please. Domiani's like, beat it let's like Let's get to that twice. point. Let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Domiani's beat it twice and I'm like almost done, but it's been nice because I've been able to I be like anytime I- have not beat it twice. Okay, you're almost there. <laughs> you, you probably lapped me, but anytime I get to a high part, I'm just like, dude, Domiani. Tell me how you do this part. It's like, I'm like, I was very happy to see Huber message me about parts. I'm like, yes, I knew he was going to message me about that. I knew he was going to message me about that. Um, yeah. And this, like, we're telling you, we're not even talking about spoilers because, like, we don't even need to get into spoiler stuff no spoilers. for, like, this amount of, like, enjoyment and good stuff. Like, this is without even talking about that stuff. Yeah. Like, that's, like, a whole other layer that we'll get to someday <laughs> to talk about that because. Most of the people who got to play through this, like, it took me over 100 hours, and I didn't finish every single thing. There's some things I did not get to finish yet that I will still be working on. Um, and it's like, okay. And because I know how many people are going to be, like, really into playing so much of the, the stuff in this game, the side quests, the mini games, that they're probably also going to take that long. Definitely. So it's like, holy crap. Um, I get anxiety yeah. if I, and I in will, any game, Damiani, yeah. if I have side quests or stuff to do, I, I cannot move on with the main quest until I until I close those out. Damiani, I know you said it was limited, yeah. but one of the things I do I do really like that uh, I didn't know was in this game until your review is this stuff where like you have these traversal mechanics, like Red Thirteen running up oh, walls yeah, and I was the a, grappling stuff, and I, yeah, I was about to talk, talk like. That was my next like point. If looking for places like where they could go further, you know, gameplay wise, that would like I would like to see more of going like further is expanding upon those like the character specific traversal mechanics they added in here because they're only utilized in certain parts. That's all I'll say. Um, they're not like persistent throughout the entirety uh, of the game. Um, so maybe if they could craft the world in a way that they're utilized a little bit more frequently and more consistently, that would be like, th th that would just be mind boggling because I mean, the, yeah, this world is so big and I mean, they it's said it in the, the, they said, they've already said it themselves. I'm saying seamless, <laughs> seamless. <laughs> they're not joking. Like I cannot state it's like, it is seamless. <laughs> Holy crap. Like I, I, I understand the image quality is coming up a lot in performance mode. They obviously did that in recent patch, 
Yeah. Seems like graphics mode got a nice touch up from that. I will but say performance mode. Yep. I do see people asking for a little bit more from that because there's still time for the release for maybe to push one more update out mm -hmm. to maybe try and do that. But you talked about it too, Hubert, behind the scenes with me, the floating, the, the objects, the unrealness, yep. the kicking up objects like from remake is back. Oh, like, so the, debris and stuff yeah, yeah. just yeah. like knocking it all over the place. Like that's still there. I will say, cause I'm always <laughs> performance mode. Well, 9.9 .9 out of 10 times. I will say performance mode has been running like a dream, but also I've noticed it's one of the biggest visual downgrades from a quality mode to a performance mode. Mm -hmm. Like when you compare them side by side, like graphics mode looks really really good performance takes a hit visually but it runs like a dream so it's just what you prioritize like like again i i i, exactly, I personally yeah. think for my eyes 60 frames just looks better because of the way it's running and everything like maybe if you look at the pixels and like if you're just still obviously graphics looks better but in motion like the graphics mode kind of gives me a headache because it's just like <laughs> but if you stand still like visually it looks way better than performance mode definitely it definitely uh, takes a hit I, I I do think potentially that this is something that the PC version yeah. and or this right. on PS5 Pro yeah. is gonna more fully realize the technical aspects of this again like I did not watch the state of play till after I finished the game because I tried watching like 10 seconds of it when I was in the middle of playing this game and I was like, wait, was like 56 hours in the game. First 10 seconds they had play spoiled me. Like, you, what the shit? I was like, wait, was what? Uh, yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm like 60 hours in the game. I, I'm safe to watch this, right? No, I'm not. I'm like, shit, I'll, I'm waiting till I finish well, this and, game. And, and like, that makes it worse crap. sometimes too. Like sometimes you can watch something, you know, before the fact and just, yes. it just flies over your head. But if you're in the game, and it's like, that what? was it, blood. Yeah, yeah. It was 100% that because I'm like, oh, I know more. Like, I have more context. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Stop, stop, stop. But yeah, like the performance, go back to the performance thing because it's said in the state of play. Um, they, they emphasize that the world is seamless. And it's like, I didn't realize that to a certain point later in the game. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is probably why some of the technical aspects of the game are like being held back because they. this is like, it's not just one giant environment. It's multiple. It's like, it's like, oh, okay. Maybe that's it. Obviously, you know, they're doing some like, you know, zoning things. So like everything's like probably like not loading at once, obviously. But that I, I get why that like some of it is, is maybe being held back by that because, well, it, it's not like probably the biggest, you know, environments. It's still very like, it's what there's so much going on in it. I feel like, and I, they, I, I do feel like the PC version, PS5 Pro version performance modes, I would wager that you're going to see the image quality naturally, but like dra maybe potentially drastically like just be better in those mm -hmm. on top of like running. And, and, and additionally, the graphics mode benefiting from that as well. Um, and I think the no thing I noticed most about image quality was that like it did look like things were like a little bit like blurry like the image quality yeah. is like a little bit blurry is like the best way to put right. it that like close-ups yep. of characters faces from like not sorry not from a close-up but like when they're just running across fields or in town walking when it's not a cut scene where they clearly are doing a little bit more under the hood but just like natural gameplay traversal or battle their faces and features looked a little blurry and I, that's what I could tell. There were some moments where I walked up to a texture, wasn't a door, but there was one early well, on where I like walked up to sure. some like, I walked up to something and I was like, I don't think they loaded the texture <laughs> for that object. I, like, I don't think it's there, yeah. but like, this is very early, so maybe they will fix this. So <laughs> it's okay. I think it's okay for now. <laughs> uh, Queen's Blood is one of the greatest mini games in video game history. <laughs> Please be excited. For oh, Queen's Blood. Fort Condor's uh, just their own, okay. Dude, Fort Condor, also one of the greatest minigames of all time, and Queen's Blood is it, Is the just... Proto Relic just Fort Condor, or is it different? No, different. it has a, I will say this, Separate. it's a unique, it's a unique set of mini games per region, for that quest line. Please be excited for Queen's Blood. <laughs> I'm definitely doing a video on some uh, Queen's Blood strats if you need them. Okay. 
It's the best. I, I, As yeah, someone I, who is just I, obsessed I, I, with card games, first up, card games, 10 out of 10, Gwent has been the gold standard for so long. You go back and, I mean, you could maybe say the same thing about Queen's Blood in like a year or so. Like, Gwent definitely has a pretty soft meta where you can really take advantage of it. You know, the decoys and the spies, GG. Uh, but Queen's Blood definitely took the best elements of Gwent. And not only has a complex card game that you can get invested in for the whole duration of Final Fantasy VII, you can, you can always go back to Queen's Blood. Um, there's just so many variety in the cards and, and you know the, the missions surrounding that it's it's very amazing and i encourage everyone to to dive in to queensblood don't skip it don't skip it is what i'm saying i will <laughs> add on it's to that so much fun. by saying a, another tease about it beyond gameplay that quest line narratively <laughs> goes places it's so fun. nice I mean, if it's Final you Fantasy, like, it's going places. I, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. I just want to say Isla, Isla Bait. Isla Bait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to interpret that to be. <laughs> Whatever I point that means. Where I was trying to mention something to Isla, and she was like, Damiotti, what are you doing? And I was like, what? Are you going to make me play this game? I'm like, now. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> nice. Anything else that you want to get Anything. into while we're in our non-spoiler Territory. <laughs> um, it is I mean, fucking incredible. Excuse my language. Uh, seriously, this is the reason to be alive. I'm not kidding. This game is amazing. Everything about it, I say, like most things, you know, it's about the journey, not the destination. Like, settle in. There, There's mm-hmm. going to be, anytime a huge game comes out like this, there's this huge rush and arms race to you know get through it burn through it make some videos about it whatever and i say you know take your time get invested especially considering the first one was midgar and now we're let loose yeah to uh to explore this world and to partake in the multitude of mini games uh (laughs) it really encourages you to to take a knee and take your time and to invest not only in the scope of it but in the intimacy of the party so just there's Speaking really that, there's no rush take your time and and enjoy the ride obviously we've got Damiani's taking the review but we should we should talk about that a little bit too the party stuff like the synergies and the oh. the um, oh, the bonds, little it's, board. Yeah, yeah. The bonds are incredible. I mean, it, it just encourages you on, on on every step of the way, whether it's by player choice or their choice. Both, they are giving you a character can, to control to make you more invested in them, or you're using other characters in combat to level up one of a one of their weapons you found or maybe you're locked out of choosing your party so it's like hey you can use these three or four people every step of the way the game is guiding you to use and engage with every single party member Mm. and it just makes everything more impactful and meaningful because of it yeah the one of the best things also is the the synergy, yeah. how it mechanically yeah. works, because this battle system is, you know, a very good battle system. But I do see some people who struggle to maybe grasp it at first, trying to treat it like an action game when it is meant to be a modern reinterpretation of the turn based system where you need to control, to jump between controlling your different characters. So synergy further encourages you to do that because to build up to a synergy, you need to be using multiple characters to build up like their synergy meter. So you'll see actively like, oh, they're lacking a single bar. I need to switch over to them. So it's like another further kind of like nudge of like, hey, don't forget you have other party members and they have different utilities and that they they, def- they definitely complement it. Like 
it, I'll say like some of the same bread and butter stuff is still there. Like when you stagger an enemy, you want Tifa going to town, building up that, like <laughs> yeah, increasing yeah. the stagger damage. Stagger to, like, it, uh, yeah, I, I, I had that 300 plus damage, <laughs> like the same way in remake. I use that same strat and like, it was like thrilled that it was back, but there are other ways to do that now. But also, yeah, just getting like red 13, um, Kate Sith, it is, in game, they say Kate Sith. They say they it multiple do. times. They it's do. Kate Sith in game. Multiple. So, but yeah, I checked before like he they sent that yeah, script yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Kate Sith is probably the most unique, you know, controlling He's, of them dude, with their, Kate their Sith mechanics. Kate has a drop kick, so hard <laughs> dude. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> They have like their normal, like you play as them uh, in their like your, their cat form, and then they can like one of their skills, the ATB bars, summons the 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 white thing, the cat, whatever the, the thing is, like the Moogle, like whatever it is, yeah, below them, and then you can like dismount and then remount, and it's like oh crap, like this is a interesting weird. It was so weird at first, yeah. but like I was like this feels way different than anything so else. Awesome. I was playing which is like just great that all of them feel mm -hmm. different like that and then like like red 13 with like their they're kind of like vengeance meter where they have these skills that can be unleashed when they activate it and then they'll get skills that will like um they like buff or unlock or do something on like while revenge or sorry revenge i wanted to say revenge vengeance. It's vengeance. <laughs> vengeance. <laughs> there's no revengeance there we go but Part yeah three. it's Final a different Fantasy way of seven revengeance <laughs> Oh god, they call it that. I'd be amazed, but nah. <laughs> but yes, I mean it, they like just stuff like that where they're just encouraging you to play as the, you know the different characters. It's you know yeah. the, to the point where it's like felt bad. It was like I've been like using this party for a while. I want to like change it up. Heck like let's yeah. get someone else in there. Yeah, definitely felt like that need. But also the game does a very good job of kind of in certain points. Yep. making you mix up yep. you don't have a choice at some points at some points you will be thrown with different groups of people so they kind of like you know that's kind of like the guiding tutorial part in some areas where it's like try out this composition see how it plays oh as the story dictates so i think they did a good balancing and there was never a part where i was like god damn it i don't have this character it was like shit it's like oh no i get to maybe i haven't used this combination before let's let's try it out it's what fun. i did think about um, you yeah a couple times because we famously in my brain at least <laughs> famously in my reality we always talked about the witcher 3 side quests yeah and how i just i was like dude i gotta do them all right 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 and then you were like no dude, if it doesn't feel right to like grind all those out just like naturally feel it out you gotta move on like you're not they're there for access but you're not supposed to do all of them, and like that's a night, that's a fun video game debate. It's like if all this content is here, are you supposed to do it all, or is it all here for you to engage with on like an RP level for what feels right? right? Well, you go somewhere, and there's there is something to do, but that yes. doesn't necessarily mean you have to go everywhere. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. I still think about this, blood. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I did look at you know some of the reviews and some of the takes of it, was that some of the repeated open world activities can be a little fatiguing. Mm, yeah. And if there's one thing, only one that I'll criticize about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it would probably be that. I play a lot of open world games and like it is really hard to get that balance of focused, high stakes momentum for the storyline in an open world versus like, okay, let me, you know, hey, the world's ending, but let me go do, you know, 20 side quests type thing. There are a lot of points of interest that you kind of do throughout each zone you get to. So like, you know, that did get a little fatiguing, but also on the flip side, it always felt rewarding. So it was kind of this give and take of like, all right, we have the open world distractions and the payoffs and the XP and the story stuff is fun, but also like before moving on to the main quest, I'm doing a lot of these. Like it's giving me access to so many. If maybe it gave me access to like a little bit and then story mission and then back to more access, that would have been a little better instead of like, all right, here's like, 
no joke, 10 plus hours of optional stuff to have fun. It, it did feel a little kind of disjointing with the pace, mm. depending on how you play, though. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you could just move on when it feels right. And that's that's that. But I, I'm always, you know, enticed to be a completionist when it comes to specific side quests that tie into the story. So that's just one. That's literally the only the only maybe criticism I have of this 10 out of 10 video game. <laughs> <laughs> Damiani, anything else you want to add? Do you, you think we should should move on and save the rest for another time? Yeah, please hurry up and spoiler beat mode, it baby. so we can talk about spoilers. Spoiler please. mode. <laughs> we, the, yeah, please. <laughs> like, I need to talk to some people about some stuff. I'm I'm ready. Like, please. <laughs> Tonight, please. the LDM you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I guess speaking of spoilers, Shiba apparently considered this existence of this trailer yeah, a spoiler. Watch it. Well, Do too bad. To? It's too late now. You oh. got to watch it. Um, the Elden Ring, finally we got a, a trailer for this thing. Shadow of the Erd Tree. Put that thing on there. All right. Um, Throw it at me. Coming. Uh, this is the live watch, Chad. I've never June seen this. June 21st, which I think is what Damiani was giggling about. What, what was the other June 21st? Yeah. Game? Oh, I know that S that's S SMT Vengeance. Oh, okay. S SMT5 Vengeance. Got it. <laughs> oh, I know that. Did we, did we knew this was going to be the DLC. Yeah. We knew M that. M uh, Mikola. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. like Moog and Moog's uh, wow. make boss it, fight hey, area, next, whatever it's hey, called. Hey, the, Miyazaki, the next time make it more boss. obvious. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, I mean, we're, yeah, <laughs> everyone knew. This, everyone knew. Everyone yeah. knew. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. There, there's like outside of this trailer though, Huber. There's almost no information. Like there is. This is a good video game. Uh, on <laughs> on the shit. website, it just it just has like it's almost, it looks almost like a poem. It's like the land of shadow, a place obscured by the Erd tree, where the goddess Marika first set foot, a land purged in an unsung battle set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikola departed divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. And now Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord. So, Dude. Um, I will just sick say... Sick monsters. I will just say that From Software DLC is the best in the biz. Straight like, up, Artorius of the Abyss. Yeah, like sometimes they're the old better hunters, than the actual games. Dude, the the freaking Dark Souls Dark two DLCs. Oh my god, get out of town, dude! Seriously, every single From Software DLC has been a legitimate ten out of ten for a DLC. You cannot get better. So considering how long this has taken. Considering what they just... The only thing I really saw was they were like, yeah, it's our biggest by volume. Right. You know, coming off of Goaty Elden Ring. I mean, uh, this is going to be... It's, it's hilarious, and, and I'm not kidding when I say that this DLC will be 2024 Game of the Year levels of quality. Straight up. This will be one of the best possible things you can play in 2024. One hundred percent. I I don't think you're wrong. Forty dollars. Yeah. I. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean. Forty dollars. Like Thirty nine ninety nine U S yeah. dollars. <laughs> yeah. Because of that price tag, I think this is like you go even bigger, Hubert. Dude. With what they're offering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mean, they've... But they also I, know their worth. They know worth. Yeah, Dabiati, I was going to say, like, they've earned it, so I'm not pissed. I'm just shocked. <laughs> like, what? That is wild. They even have, bucks? like, above that, too. You know, they have, the, like, this, the special edition, the collector's edition Holy with the statue moly. and all that for, the, for DLC. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, again, they haven't missed with their DLCs. They have not missed once, so... And, and just the base game as well. So when you look at, you know, their history and, and everything, I, I just, 
they've earned it, I guess. Like, wow, $40, holy crap. So that, considering they said it was the biggest too, I bet this is like 20, 30 hours. Yeah, I bet it's pretty I'm beefy. Not not surprised if it yeah, would yeah, like be a at full, least that much. Yeah, full game. Wow, Damiani, you played a lot of Elden Ring yourself. What, <laughs> yeah. what, are, you, what are you thinking here with this, I, this craziness? I forgot in so much Elden Ring. By the <laughs> way, oh, like, when I was watching this trailer. I was like, I was like, oh my god, yeah. I forgot. Like, I was like, that area is like, I forgot that existed. I was like, I'm forgetting names, but I mean. The name that they're saying for the Impaler, whatever their, their, their name is, it's like the and then the, the interview with Miyazaki about, hey, remember uh, Millennia and that boss fight? How it drove you insane? <laughs> you might be able to like spec something like that. I'm like, it's this. It's gonna be this dude. Like this. Or sorry, they're gonna be like wrecking you. Yeah. Like I'm just like shuddering. At the thought of like having to go through this again, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I thought that was like one per one per from soft game. It's like one one that was like this destroys you, destroys you more than anything. You get over that hump, and it's like it's like everything else in this game is not so bad anymore. And but like, but when you go back to them, like, oh, they still kind of suck. Monk. Uh, so bastard, this Huber, like just with like a, like like the spears up on this, like mm-hmm. you, we're getting destroyed. Or like red hair, it's just like triggering. It's like yep. no, no, <laughs> long no, no, no. flowing not again, red not hair again. I'm turning around, Damian. <laughs> I'm turning around. Multiple. Yeah, I was like, what's that face? What's that <laughs> gum? At, like, sli- like <laughs> she had all the like, like the sword spinning like anime style. Like it hits you. Like if you don't roll the right way, yeah. it, like catches you and everything. I forget what it's called. It's like, what's this version of that gonna yeah. be? It's like what dragoon jump that you can't dodge yep. and like one shots you. I will say, I like, am yeah. trained. I am trained by from software themselves so hard from Artorias of the Abyss to never go to New Game Plus ever in a Souls game until the DLC's out. Mm. Ever. Okay. Because so many of those DLCs is like, you need to be, you know, 60% of the way uh, through the game yeah. to have access to oh, this yeah, spot yeah, yeah. and this specific item. So, like, I beat Elden Ring fully and was like, okay, I'm going to wait for the DLC, thinking it was going to be in, like, <laughs> six months. Yeah. You know, here we are. I still got my... Completed game, ready to go. I'm locked and loaded. So, ready to fly, dude. Unreal. I, it, it's always hard, too, and Damiani, is to switch weapons in a From Software DLC. Because well, they always but, add the sickest things, but it's like, these, yo. They look sick. Yeah, my heavy brick hammer is plus 10, oh. dude. I'm not switching that out. They were showing like a machine gun I crossbow. Know, monk, yeah. And then, like, I want the, I want, it yeah, looks the cool, but like, doing I don't use crossbows. Shit. <laughs> Dude, I want to go melee monk and just like punch the Dude. shit out of people, like <laughs> melee combo them. Yes. Like dash to them and like roundhouse kick them away. It's yep. like like Dude, if I could dash back and forth, I'm like let's go, <laughs> like uh, uppercut finish every yep. single boss. Like, <laughs> Give me some yeah. sick like teleport dash, dude. It's over. <laughs> Use you all your stamina yep. to, you gotta, yep. like, to get away. Oh man. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Dodi. I'm just, yeah, this this year, this year, more and more, more, more stuff this year. We're going to be debating Final Fantasy VII versus a DLC. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a, DLC? a lot of people, like, really treated Phantom Liberty like yeah. new game. It's true. You know, like, yeah. this expansion is just its own story, all yeah. of this. But Some you, of that You did was... need to have the base game, though. Same with this. For sure. I played it. I, I didn't play Phantom Liberty, but I played Cyberpunk just a year before. Mm. Unfortunately, I waited so long. I feel like some of the Phantom Liberty hype was because people played it at launch and then played it or didn't play it at all. So they were coming in at it from mm. like, yo, this is a completely new game fully because they hadn't played it in so long. I mean, Elden Ring came and it was already a 10. <laughs> so might be a little different this time around, but I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Well, or even, you know, like, uh, you know, the 14 expansions. You know, a lot of times those get treated essentially like... Totally. Good you know, call. a new game, essentially. Yeah. You know, in terms of how people are giving yeah. out awards and looking at them and all of that. One of these days, Damiani, 14 will be our goatee. <laughs> One of these days. 
Uh, let's uh, let's roll a trailer for for Ultros here. I've been obsessed with this little guy. Yeah, you. Uh, have. And it, and it turned out to not be so little. They they've told me <laughs> they told me it was going to be like ten to fifteen hours. Or You're whatever. thirty hours deep. I'm for further than thirty hours. <laughs> oh deep. my god. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I like Metroidvanias, and yeah. you know, there's some interesting things going on. Art style from El Huervo, uh, Hotline Miami guy. Nice. Um, and and it looks like when you first start playing, eventually you, you just you adjust to it. But when you first start playing, the the amount of colors is just like wild. It's like yeah. my eyes can't handle all of this. It looks like a, a black light poster. Um, it's uh. Definitely plays best on drugs, for <laughs> sure. No, I don't think so. But it is, it it does have that sort of um, air of of mystery in it, to where it's like you start off, you're just dropped in here, you f- f- find some ghost essentially. It seems like you're not even sure, like because you see the guy's body, but then he's also like there floating around talking to you, and you take and you take a sword out of his body, and that's how you get a sword. But you know, it's like one of those kinds of games. Like you know, you start with nothing, and you Sick. figure out what you can do, how all the mechanics and stuff are, um, and uh, you know, I, I don't know if you could tell in there, Huber. It's, it's a very I, I wrote down juicy bursts. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Because <laughs> like a lot of times when you kill, every enemies, kill looks awesome. You know, like there's like blood everywhere or Heck whatever. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the combat mechanics uh, they really emphasize um, variety. So when you're fighting an enemy, you. Ha- uh, you you when you kill them you get like essentially food out of them <laughs> nice and depending on how varied your attacks are you will either get like a prime rib or you'll get like a bloody pulp huh. of of stuff and so if you mash them out pop 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 bloody pulp right but if you use a bunch of your moves yeah if you like dodge behind them backstab do some double kicks and okay. you know uppercut here and there and then yeah then you'll get like a prime move okay. or a prime uh prime quality meat sometimes so, bloodworth when a game forces me to play a very specific way i get a little bummed out when it's like yo use all these flashy moves when really the most efficient way would be to just grind this thing into a bloody pulp um but i, I think there's a lot of it where it generally isn't either because it's like a lot of them have like a forward guard, and so like you do need to oh, okay sometimes make that little slip behind them and cool. and get a backstab or whatever. Got it. So now here's I have to like really be careful about how deep I get into this stuff because it gets deep, and then and there's a lot that like I think that people are going to want to discover on their own. Yeah, um, the so one of the things now with that meat is that you have a skill tree that's they basically refer to it as your cortex. cortex. So when so you you're you're acquiring skills is essentially that um, you get nutrition from eating meats and fruits and then when you have enough nutrition then you can unlock this certain spot on a skill tree. So it might be this high jump to where it's like, oh, you jump and then you jump again and you, the second jump is higher. Or it might be um, the backstab or stealth kill or whatever like that. Or it might be that you have more health or whatever. But there's like this web of skills and like a fog of war oh, with that. them. So it's like you don't know what's up there until you get this thing and then it branches off. And it's like, okay, and then what's over here? What's on this uh, side? That's Going fun. through your skill tree. Now, Huber, without... Getting too too deep into it, when you do co- when you complete certain objectives, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this guy is like, okay, these these shamans out there, they're bad dudes. You got to go kill them all, right? Whoa, is what he tells you from the get go. Can we trust this person? That's your question. Well, Whoa. one of your questions. <laughs> okay. Can you trust this person? I don't know. <laughs> There's other characters you come across. Do you trust them? Do you fight <laughs> them? You know. So you have these these kinds of things that, that happen throughout the game that we, yeah. we were just exploring and stuff, and you get into an area, and there's a character there, and maybe, you know, this person is training you, and maybe you fight them, maybe you don't. 
Is it, there's little interesting things that happen there. Anyways, <laughs> but when you kill one of these shaman guys, um, you'll get there'll be upgrades that you get um, that are are like meaningful, like again, like Metroidvania, like this thing does it. Like this is a thing that essentially serves as like a jetpack. Nice. So it's like if you're in like this yellow goo, you can jetpack. And, and fly up into the air, and then but after you're out of the yellow goo for too long, then it like runs out of juice, Got that it. kind of thing. That's yeah, one yeah. of the things that I, I can talk about a little bit more easily. But when you kill one of those guys, and you get back to the center where Ultros is, Ultros basically escapes, and you go into like this, you trigger like this time loop thing. And so the time loop, those skill trees that you unlock time loops are in this year. Through, huh? through, uh, but it's, it's weird though because it, I, I, it, mechanically it's it's interesting. So those skills that you unlocked, all gone. Whoa! You have every loop. You have to unlock skills again. However, Ooh. if you explore, there are also like these like brain things. These no light. And so you can lock in. Love it. The skills. Lock it. In and so <laughs> then, with enough of those, eventually, you don't necessarily have to keep going through and unlocking them over and over again. So it's interesting how these things play out. Sweet. Um, another interesting thing about that time loop is so it resets you, it resets other characters. However, there are other parts of the world that don't reset. Hmm. So one of the things that you do in this game is you, is you take seeds and you plant them in fertile soil. Oh yeah, we've seen that. And you and and these plants grow. And the first basic plant is like it's just like it's a, a tree, like it's got a trunk and then eventually it grows like a canopy and then you can use that as like a platform. Nice. And so the loop going through a loop actually gives those plants time to grow and get bigger. And uh -huh. and so like if there's <laughs> a tree see. that lets you get I up see, to here, now it grows and now you can get higher up That's than hype. you could before. Okay. And there's all kinds of different plants. There might be like a ten different plants, eight to ten different plants. Do you get to like choose that. which tree you plant, or is yes. it automatic for it, each? It, you? Basically, you have to find seeds, and then you choose where to plant them. Very cool. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 and so, and then you, you learn throughout the game, so I'm ex just experimentation. It's like, okay, what does this plant even do? How does this plant grow? How does that benefit me? Like, how do these things work? Uh, and it is actually an incredibly substantial part of this game is growing plants. And I know that sounds weird, but that's part of the reason it ends up becoming so obsessive is, is, is like your mix of this like exploration and then like figuring out like, well, what can I do? Do with these plants how can i use them and all of that uh and and then part of the part of it is that some of these mechanics can be a little finicky mm -hmm. and so it's like sometimes i am burning a lot of time just trying to like i want this plant to grow this way hmm. like and, and, and sort of like you, i need it to go over here how do i get it over here you know there's things where you can like take a snippet off of one plant and and graft it onto another plant. And so you can kind of do that to like sort of create stairs for yourself in certain areas and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, and sometimes I would be messing around with that and I would do something and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I just broke that thing that I just spent all this time trying to, to, to craft. And now I'm like, oh, do I start over? Um, yeah, so lots of interesting crazy stuff like that. Um, and then there are mechanics that, again, sort of like a Souls game, like you talk to somebody, they tell you about a thing, but because of the time progression stuff, there were, I just didn't necessarily always connect the dots. God. And it. so there were things that I was like, all right, I want to hunt, like with any Metroidvania, like I want 100% this freaking map. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to get there because to get there I need something else and I don't know how to make this work but I like okay but now I've beaten the game and I still can't get there so what the, what heck, the heck people and it like Huber no joke it wasn't until 
I had finished the game, and I had gotten to Vegas, and I was like looking through Vegas. my footage. Vegas. I was before before I was like I had gone to dice. I had like extra time, and I was like looking through footage, and I saw something in a part that I you know I remembered from playing it recently, and I saw something from when I first encountered it, and I'm like, <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. what that does. There was a whole mechanic. That's pretty badass. There's so a whole freaking mechanic that, that I was just revelation missing, <laughs> yeah. right? And there's a, so there's stuff in here like that, uh, and even like some of the stuff that I think is actually incredibly important to seeing everything that this game has to offer. That I kind of stumbled on by accident, hmm. and it's like, oh, oh, this is a whole this this completely creates a whole other dimension to how I'm going to play this game now and, and puts a whole other layer all across the whole map. Wow. Um, yeah. And, and, the, and again, I'm trying to not say too much. What I will say, what is very interesting um, about the combat mechanics and you're talking about, oh, I could just bash guys a lot and stuff, all of this. This is one of those games where... If you pick up on these threads mm -hmm. and you follow along to what this game is doing and trying to do, it really, the gameplay progression evolution of what you do from when you start playing the game to when you're at, like, in the end, you know, post game or what, like, it's not really post game because you could, like, Kind of like Chrono Trigger. It's like, yeah. I can decide to just, like, go finish it again, whatever, yeah. right? But, like, this, the narrative and the gameplay match up really well. It's if you essential. pick up what they're putting down. It's essential for a Metroidvania, for and sure. And it's, it's not a typical progression. Yeah. It, it's very different. Um, and if you want to know later off camera, I'll, yeah, I, I'll tell no, you. But I, it's, I, I it's, make it's a point cool. to play Metroidvanias, and this one looked sick, but I need to play this game. Yeah. So there are some control things. There are some some finicky things, like I said, that can be frustrating. I I think the wall jump is just garbage. Ooh. Uh, that's a, that's one where like, why is this like? That is a dagger. Because you basically don't get any height. You get like a tiny little bit of height, but it's mostly just like zipping you right off that wall. And it's yeah. also kind of hard to like figure out like, should I be pushing into the wall or away from the wall? And like, you know, like those kinds of things. Yeah. And so there are times where I'm like, I should just be able to get up here, but Wall jump's kind of a pain in the butt. But at the same time, like I said, fully obsessed with yeah. wanting to see every nook and cranny of this game because it's, you know, there's some very interesting Mission accomplished then, from a Metroidvania. Things. Yeah. If you're committed to seeing everything, I mean, that's what else could you ask for? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I'd definitely be interested to get your take. I'm in for sure. And then I'm, I'm interested to see if you even see. Yeah. These, or if you miss them. Because, yeah. like I said, there's a couple of things I missed. There was I another remember thing. you were always obsessed with uh, Tunic Secrets. Is right. that, uh, are we on that level, Blood? Um, <laughs> there is... I came across... I put Actually, I put this screenshot on Twitter. I came across a thing that looks like Morse code. <laughs> but it's not Morse code, so okay. I don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> but it is a message that was very hard to get. And then I, I you know, and I, I, I get this thing, to, and it gives me this message that it's like all dots and dashes. I'm like, cool. I don't Did you look up the Morse code for it? No, that's what I'm saying. I looked up Morse code. And what was it? And it does not match Morse nothing. code. Okay, wow. It does not line up. Crazy. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> all right. That's the only thing like that I've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like the other stuff is like actually, what's cool is, is like one, those other things, like I said, it's when you, when you get that aha moment and you connect those dots, now you're like, oh, now I can do this all over the place. And so you're just looking for other places to do those things. Totally. Yeah. Which is why I think it's easy to make it obsessed. Because like, okay, I see this spot on my map I can't get to that I think I can do this and that to make it, make something, make a path yeah. to that. Yeah. Cool game. Sick. All right. Sick. We've got more to come. But if you've been enjoying the show so far, please take a second to like and subscribe and ring that bell on YouTube. Uh, leave a review on those podcast services. Uh, it helps us, and it helps you stay connected. And now, a word from our sponsors. Selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. 
from the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. I like Shopify because no matter what size you are, it'll grow with you all the way from start to untold riches. No matter what you're selling or where, they're there to help you get there. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States, and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn, and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash allies, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash allies now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash allies. And if you are a patron of Easy Allies, thank you. All right, if you're wondering, Damiani stepped away for a second. So that's why we didn't get his his thoughts on Ultros. He's just researching. Yeah, well, we don't know what's up, but you know, he, he needed to step away. It'll be, he'll be back. Uh, but, Huber. Yo. We just we just got a taste. We're I know. Just, we're just dipping our toes in. I so know. maybe we'll talk about it more. We'll have a run back for sure. Yeah, Pacific That's what, Drive. But before we even yeah. get into it, I want to say that about the format of the weekly podcast talking about our game impressions, I like the run back. Mm-hmm. Because my thoughts change so dramatically day to day, week to week on a game that I'm either currently playing or that I just finished. There's like all that. It takes like a year to have like my final thoughts. Even after that, I'm changing thoughts. So it's nice to just come back, especially in this format where we're like talking about games that maybe we're still playing or just played. So it'll be nice to come back because I am hooked within the first hour on Pacific Drive, which has been on record one of my most anticipated games of this year. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we play basically the tutorial. I mean, we we've, yeah. we've done our first our first loop, yeah. our first cycle in Pacific Drive. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I was you know curious about and concerned about having you know played preview builds and stuff was just like how do they onboard you with all of this stuff because it would yeah. be overwhelming. One hundred percent, and it can still be a little overwhelming in a sense. But I do think that like they walk you through like here is the process. Yeah. Do this. Good on board. Now do this. Now do this. Super good. And like stack all that stuff up. Yeah. Plays really well with the controller too. I was playing on PS5. I was worried about that mm-hmm. when I saw how many how many menus and systems there were and crafting and and looting. I was like, oh, is this like a you know, would mouse and keyboard probably be better for this? Played with the controller. Perfect. Yeah. Some issues with like, do I tap R one or hold R one here? Yeah. You yeah. Know? I had that thing where like I had a, a There's moment some weird... where I was like, how do I get out of the car? <laughs> and because I would, I for whatever reason in my head I was like, hold R one to yeah. open the door and get out. But but every time I would hold R one, it would just like close the door and then yep. hold R one, open the door and like what? Because so many things are tap R one or hold R one, tap R two or hold R two. Yeah, and then the L's as well, tap or hold. So it's like, wait a second, am I am I tapping yeah. or holding? And so then if you just tap, then you get completely out of the car. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. So that's it. The whole couple hours deep, door. you won't even think about it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, you you're out there. This, this is a full on like alternate history. Yeah, craziness. Oh, I thought you were about to talk shit on my insane driving. No, <laughs> you uh, were like you're out there off roading. I don't know what you're doing, bro. Yeah, like, there was a, there was a road that led directly <laughs> to the objective, and Huber was just like, ah, I think I can drive to that. Look, there's a tower I can drive to. I'm like, yeah, that's the tower they told you to go to. You follow I, the road. I didn't trust the road. All right, I didn't trust it. Come in the back way. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, so like some stuff went down since like 1947 or whatever. Yeah, 1947, and, and then, then this like thing the got 90s. walled off in 1955, mm-hmm. and now you're playing in like 98. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you're just like driving out by this place, and like you literally get sucked into it. Yeah. And then your car is just like the parts are just floating in the air and yeah. and everything. Yeah, really snappy, engaging premise right off the bat. Um. They leave you in control, which I think is essential for a game like this. You're talking about the onboarding blood, and I think so much of that is because the game doesn't take control away from you. Mm. It's telling you about everything, it's teaching you everything, and you're in it this whole time. You know, in the first hour, you're not just like watching things, okay, reading a bunch of tutorials and text. You know, so, it, you know, it, it teaches you something and then you physically are doing it while it's teaching you. Yeah. And I think it's just so smart. And like I said, within the first hour, I was like, yeah, I, I was hyped about this. And now I'm just like, dude, I'm in till credits. Like, I know I'm in on this game. Yeah. And there is there is a lot of text, but it's like it's not it doesn't stop you. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's like, OK, you discover this thing. Now it's in your, you know catalog or whatever you can go and, and read this story over here mm-hmm. uh and that sort of thing uh yeah and i also think it is a it is definitely a slow burn game so i think for you need sure i think you need to be prepared for that i think you need to be ready to settle in settle in. there's a lot of times when you're like you're just driving and following the road maybe someone's talking to you maybe there's the not. first tutorial or is your windshield wipers right. like <laughs> settle in you know Oh, uh, but that's something that is actually really fascinating <laughs> is uh, that, yeah, to like a s- small degree, there's like a simulation. Definitely. Uh, vibe to this, 100%. to driving your car around. The last trailer we saw, we learned that from the trailer. And, and Isla's playtime as well. She played the, the early. She played a preview build recently. Yeah. yeah. And full disclosure, like she always says, she's in it. She's on the radio. Find her. Yeah. I haven't um, found her yet. Yeah. Um, but there is, there's a lot going on, but like you were saying, cause the onboarding is so nice. It doesn't feel particularly overwhelming right out of the gate, but there's definitely a simulation vibe yeah, of managing, you know, durability and resources and crafting and health and all this. Yeah. Stuff. But I, what I mean by that is like, not just health, but it's like, you know, like you get a flat tire. You're going to feel that flat tire. Yeah. You know, yep. if your tire gets ripped off for one reason or another, okay, well, now you need to repair that tire yeah. or you need to get a, like, make a new tire, mm-hmm. craft a new tire. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, the, the thing I love that, it, like, has caught me off a couple of times is get, you get out of the car without putting it in park. Love it. And the car always, just starts rolling downhill. It's like, oh, oh, nope, nope. No. I turn the car off every time. You turned it off every time? Every time. That's good because you know what? Your car is also sitting there burning fuel. Yeah. And so if you don't turn your car off and you go wander around, you come back and it's like, oh, wait, <laughs> I'm running out of gas. Yeah. And the same thing with the headlights. You leave those headlights on. I left the headlights on. battery starts dipping down. Got to turn those headlights so off. So you got to watch blood. out for that too. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. And... and we were talking about, you know, what it would be like to, again, it's early, early hours, but what it's like to get out of your car and explore. And just one of the earliest ones is like, yo, you got to get some resources, like check those, you know, cab, the check the cabin or, or, or the, the trailer, whatever that is. And just pulling up and getting out. And even though it's just for a brief moment, you know, a few, a minute or two, it's a very fleeting moment, getting out and having that vulnerability and having that finite control to exploration, you yeah. know, going from just driving to finding a place to finding something within a place, I think, uh, is just so, it, it adds a lev- another level of investment to the game that I really appreciated from the jump. Yeah. And you get some cool tools. Um, the, the the three that I've seen so far, there's a basic crowbar. Classic, dude. I th- Gordon Freeman, immediately. Immediate Gordon Freeman thoughts. Pop, pop some trunks. Yeah. Pop some doors. Yep. 
Uh, Probably a freaking head crab coming, dude. I'm ready to bash it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a uh, scrapper. Yeah. This big old, like, uh, some red faction circular shit. saw <laughs> that you just, you like, you can use it on all kinds of stuff, mostly using it on, like, wrecked cars. Yeah. It's, you know, grinding down the doors and the um, tires mm-hmm. and all of that and paneling. It goes very fast. And also, in your inventory, you can stack a lot of a resource on one full stack. Yeah. Very appreciated. Yeah, so you grind it down and then you Chill. pick up the raw resources and yeah. then you can craft your own because your car has, like, all of these different panels, mm-hmm. headlights, bumpers, doors, craft all that stuff. One of the things that's it's, what's funny is uh, there's there's a few different types of like repair items, uh, and one of them is just like repair putty. And yeah, so you just like so take fun. a paintbrush. I love this. And like and it just uh, just throw goop on it. All yes. Right. Now that that uh, <laughs> that armor is back to full. Oh, but <laughs> I love it because it feels so grounded, but also so science fiction. Yeah, it's so. Which gamey, is like this right? whole game. It's like yo, this is super based in reality, but it's also like really sci-fi, a fantasy based on reality. Yeah. See how we tie that. The sealant too. Did you use any sealant? <laughs> No. Because the sealant is it's kind of like, well, it's like a fix-a-flat type of thing, right? Ah. You know, so like for on a tire, it's like, oh, fix-a-flat. Okay, it makes sense. But then you also use it on like uh, cracked windshields and stuff, too. <laughs> nice, nice. So, you, you know, seal it up. Sick. Uh, there's a mechanical one, too, that I haven't, haven't had to use yet so far. Yeah. Um, also, health kits that you yep. can craft. Yep. Canned food and out there that will help you as well because there's yeah. all kinds of hazards. There's like electrical hazards and stuff like that. Uh, oh, the other tool is the impact hammer. Impact that hammer. That thing feels hype. good. Yeah, it's like it does. a pneumatic, like, <laughs> it feels piston. good. So, it, like, some metro shit, dude. Yeah. Some uh, metro, metro vibe. Because, like, click, 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 click. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and, like, right there at the kind of, you know, after that first loop, there's like this other room in the garage, yeah. and you use the impact hammer to open mm-hmm. that room. And it's nice to just, like, breach open some doors with that thing. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Uh, but that's kind of how it works. It's like you go out there, you collect resources. Um, when you have the correct amount of resources, like you can craft things for your car, but then there's also things that you need for specific stuff back at your garage. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you get like some like jars of plasma or whatever, and then like this thing from a radio tower, mm-hmm. and then you take them back, you take them to the, the crafting machine, pumped. and then you build a radio tower yeah and then that radio tower allows you to go to more areas yep because they're, they call them like stable pockets or whatever yeah. in in the midst of all of this stability um and then you you basically get you get back to your garage um by finding um these things called anchors and you put them in this big machine you've got in your driver's seat or your passenger seat sorry um, and that powers up this thing that summons this vortex yeah. in a specific point on the map. In the trailers, we've seen it. Yeah, and then you have to drive into the vortex to to get back before yeah. everything collapses in around you because it's like rearranging matter. So yeah, kind of. I will say the only the only you know the only issue I had was um, there's like three separate NPCs chattering at you yeah and you never well in at least the first hour you don't see them you, they're it, just like chattering chattering yeah, the, chattering, and one of them, chattering and it's like i don't i'm a visual human mm-hmm. so it's like these three voices are constantly chattering at me as i'm trying to learn a very complex game and it's just like some of this is just like going over my head but also you're bringing in this like word salad lore of like what is you know you're talking about like breachers and whatever the heck so within the first hour like i don't know maybe maybe like bombarding me with like super important video game terminology and lore and also tutorial mechanics a bit much yeah i think part of it too is you were trying to squeeze it in a little bit yeah yeah, yeah uh, one enough. of the things that they do um is because there's like the main person that talks to you, but then those si- side guys who are out wherever they are, <laughs> they become kind of optional. Got it. So you'll see things come up with like a yellow button. It's like hold the button if you want to hear what this guy's talking about. Excellent. So they do trim that kind down of ease a, a off little on bit. That. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 
perfect. So far. I don't know how much we're going to get into, if we're going to meet other people. But yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with you that, like, it feels like Oppie or whatever her name is, Ophelia. Yeah. It feels like she should be there in the garage with you. Yeah. Like, this is my garage. Get me more invested. And I'm like, like, it would make where stuff are more you? real. Like, yeah. what am I doing actually? It's just super vague. Is she behind that keypad door? Yeah. I think, maybe. Yeah. So. Just very vague out of the gate, which is good for the mystery side. It's like, what is even going on? They don't even know. Yeah. But also, like, if you had maybe just one of them be present, it would, yeah. I, don't I, know. I will say, I, I, told, I told this to Gabby earlier. Um, I, I think a fair comparison to make, and, and, I, and I don't want to overhype anything or whatever, but I, I do feel like like a single player lethal company, right? Yeah. Like you go out there, you you get your stuff that you need. Sure. You get back in time, and then okay, now you can kind of build up your base a little bit more, totally. build up your car a little bit more, attach some armor that protects you against. You know, these little freakos flying around with their yep. st- sticky tentacle trying to steal your car. Don, will you tell <laughs> me if chat will be bummed if I stream it already in progress? Because I definitely want to stream this game, but I had to play some to talk about it right now. Yeah, I'll let you know. Let yeah. me know. Let me know. I, I want to stream it with chat. Okay. As, as long as you, when you start your stream, you start in the garage. Yeah. I think sure. it'll probably be okay. All right, sick. Um, cool. But maybe, I I'm mean, so hyped you, on could, this game. you could restart. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. You're right. I'm yeah. right there. But um, I will say another one thing that that on you know on a negative side, and maybe if, if you're playing this to watch out for, um, it it did not handle me sequence breaking very well. What? So what happened was, because um, you know, like part of the tutorial is like find the anchor and and yeah. put it in the arc and stuff. So I had already found an anchor. Oh. Before she told me to go find an anchor. And it still wanted you to find another. And so that was like one of the check boxes. But I'm yeah. like, I already found an anchor. And so like I activate the thing and I'm like, okay, go to the pillar. I go to the pillar. I went into the pillar. I get back to the garage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it still had those objectives. And I'm like, I'm back. I don't need to, I don't need to do this. You and know then- what handles that perfectly, Damiani? <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Hey, go find the thing and, and, and come back to me. I, I already found it. Here it is. Here, I've got the thing. Yeah. Oh, clutch. Yeah, the clutch. way they account for that. Yes, yeah. yes. It's yeah, so good. I had this whole thing. And then Hebrew, you know, it's funny. Is, so like, I was like, okay, well, maybe if I like trigger the next thing, mm-hmm. then it will get me back on track, right? So then I went up to the thing to build the radio tower. And I had built the radio tower. And now it was telling me, it's like, oh, you, you dropped the items from your inventory. Oh, no. I'm like, no, I, I made the Don't thing. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then I basically, I had to go back out to that first area and redo that whole first quest. No. I had, I still had all the materials, right? So I didn't have to pick up as many things. Got it. But I still had to like, okay, smash a thing, mm-hmm. go to the tower, get yep. an anchor, go, it, it did, just have to do it in the right order. Tutorial. <laughs> Don't go outside of the order. Very strict. <laughs> Tutorial. It's like, please, please learn it. Do this. Huber, yeah. chat would be happy if you jumped in either place. Totally fine nice. with you jumping in later. Perfect. But they'd love for you to stream a little bit of it. Hell Looking it. forward to it. Yeah. Thanks, Chai. Yeah, this is this is this is our jam. Late night jam for sure. Nice. That's very good vibes with this game. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Damiani, we haven't got that far. Do you have any questions on Pacific Drive? You have any what any thoughts? Uh sorry. I just I don't know if you saw I did step away for yeah. a little bit, so I just jumped back in. Yeah. You guys wrapping up there, so um, I guess I'm glad, like, you're glad you're enjoying it. Mm-hmm. You know, it looked kind of cool, but I haven't, you know, haven't really gotten to, like, get my hands on it. Tell me, Annie, what's a, what's a rogue light that you love? Do you, do you have one? Um, can you think of one? So, I, Hades? Hades? Did you play Hades? Hades. I was gonna, I was trying to think of something other than Hades <laughs> before I answered, because, like, I was gonna say, like, well, maybe Hades is yeah. my favorite one. Yeah. Um, well... I mean, do you count? I mean, do you, I don't know. Like, what do you call vampire survivors? I mean, like, that would count. That I'd count. Have, you, I'd count because sure. you have the persistent. Yeah, but, I'd count okay, because then it, then it's van, van vampire <laughs> okay, survivors six, is my number one. Yeah, yeah, and then for for rogue like it's still FDL. Nice. Oh yeah, the master. <laughs> of course, <laughs> sick. Nice. All right, a little different. Uh, I was out last week. I was out at Dice. 
dice. And uh, I was rolling dice. It was not rolling dice, but I was at dice. Uh, and yeah, this is a. Uh, it was, I was went in there with some apprehension because I have not been two dice for something like twenty years. Um, and twenty I, years. Yeah. That like, was the last time you were a dice. The last time, because like I brought actually brought the shirt and was showing people because I had like 2004 shirt. Twenty years. <laughs> I I might have gone in 2005. I might have gone in 2006. I definitely did not go in 2007. 2005, or later. dude. I was in high school. <laughs> Holy shit. So I wasn't sure what to what to expect out of the show. I wasn't sure like what am I doing here exactly, right? Yeah. Um, but I had remembered from back then that like. This is feeling like, oh, this is one of my favorite things to go to. Dice? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm back. Like, this was just so freaking great. Did it reaffirm those thoughts? It's yeah, your favorite? It really, I had such a, such a good time. You like it more than E3 everything? I mean, it's, it's a totally different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it's because there's very little of, like, I mean, it depends on what your job is, right? Some people have back-to-back appointments. They're stuck in a yeah. suite, you know, half the time or whatever. Checking up. Right, you know, articles, just but blah, 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 blah. for the yep. most part, for like a you know general attendance of dice, it's like, no, you are here to talk to people. You're here to talk to people and to meet people, and basically that's what I did Sweet. for like three days in a row, from like eight thirty in the morning until one thirty in the morning, Damn. <laughs> talking and Blood talking and talking and talking, and talking, um, and 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 more people that i've talked to and met that like than i could possibly ever list out right it was so you see keely yeah talked to keely for a good nice. while um you talk about dune how you're not going to see it in the imax no i didn't okay but, <laughs> but yeah but we talked about some stuff and then like in and, and you know i had introduced sort of not really introduced some other people came up to talk to him that i had met while i was at dice and i'm like but Keely, you don't know them, you know. <laughs> and so, and then, and then, he, and then it was fun because he was like, "Well, Bloodworth is vouching for you." Then you know, no, I gotta check yeah. your game out. That is know? legit. <laughs> that is legit. But Whoever says it. But that's kind of the thing is it's like people. There are people that it was their first dice ever. There are people that it was like their seventeenth dice. You know, there's like people that are just like starting out on indie teams. And then you know, you know, Ted Price is hanging out, you yeah. know, and and Shuhei is there, and you know, Adam Boy is, and just like so, so, so many people, you know, and then like so many people that like I kind of know from online. I've kind of talked to parasocial at a summer game fest or something here and there, but not really, right? And so with Dice, like I had so many opportunities to really just like hang with people and actually get to have conversations and then actually see them next day and like have another conversation and now it's like oh we're actually getting to know each other yeah you know in ways that i, I wouldn't at any other real event because it's That's like awesome. you see somebody on the way to something else right yeah um always always yeah and and it has totally like this uh this summer camp kind of vibe too because there is um there's like these uh included like breakfasts and lunches um, and, and so it's like cafeteria, cafeteria style. You like you get up your plate, you get your eggs in the morning, and everything. What and time then, is breakfast? Uh, it was from eight to nine thirty. I want to say. Ooh, I'm asleep. Yeah. I'm asleep. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll it's see worth you at it. lunch, everybody. It's so wor- I'd say like if if you were going to dice, it's like <laughs> one of the best things you could do is go to those things because it's like you. And basically, one of my strategies like throughout the whole week was like, okay, find somebody I know that's talking to somebody I don't know, right? <laughs> and so, like, with breakfasts and lunches, it's like, okay, I'm going to sit, uh, okay, I'm going to sit next to Hip Hop Gamer nice, and talk with Hip Hop Gamer, and then we're, like, he's getting into this argument with these these devs about using, like, cheats and stuff, you know, and we're having what? this great conversation back and Is forth. He for or against yeah, cheats? He, he's all about, he's sponsored by Plitch and everything, so okay. he loves Plitch. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Play and how so you he's play. arguing with Ariel Knight and if these other there. guys about Plitch. You know, and we're going back and forth. And and it's <laughs> and it was great because it's like, okay, I again I've I've seen Hip Hop Gamer, we've said hi, we've hugged for yeah. years. Yeah. Have I ever before seen Hip Hop Gamer speak in a normal tone of voice? Where he's not just shouting like you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. And that's what I mean. It's like, yeah. oh, we actually like talked and we talked multiple times, <laughs> you know? Awesome. It's like 
and, and same thing like uh, Radic from CD Projekt, you know, it's like had breakfast with him one morning, another day, like sat, sat down with him and, uh, you know, he's just watching uh, a soccer game or whatever and seeing his team lose, <laughs> you know, and I'm going there through emails with him, that, you know, and, and yeah. we chat here and there or whatever. You know, and then later in the evening, like we'd be, you know, with the same group at a bar, you know, yeah. or whatever. Did they have a craps table there? Um, there, I mean, it was a casino, so it's like, it's in the aria, so like they have like a convention area where there's some of the dice stuff. Were you playing craps? Play? No, I didn't play any of that stuff. And then there's a couple of like the restaurants and bars. I didn't and know so it was they, an aria. They would have some. I know, they have official, I, know, I know where it is. They would have official functions, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. people would also be at, at some of the bars. And so, like, when times when, like, you don't know what to do, you just kind of, like, walk laps. Yeah. And then see who you run into, you know? Sick. Um, and there are, there are other, like, planned activities and stuff. Like, Tuesday, they had, like, a whole bunch of stuff, like, go-kart racing and golf and uh, golf tournament and Magic the Gathering and D&D and poker nice. and stuff like that. Um, but, like, a lot of that stuff is, like, close to the press. It's like because it's like the limited seating. It's like they want to make sure that the people that are like actually like they're buying tickets, like actually get to participate in everything. Yeah. You know, so I'm t- totally cool with all that. Um, and then they also have like a one track sort of session um, schedule that's totally optional, but like people speaking and stuff. So like Gabe, who was the um, the director on Phantom Liberty and and Cyberpunk 2.0. He gave a talk about basically how like they completely reinvented and mm-hmm. restructured their team, mm-hmm. you know. So like rather than just like everybody shoveled off in their own apartments, it's like okay, what we're going to do instead is we're going to mix like a narrative person and a gameplay person and an animator and like get all of you guys together in your own little bubble, and we have these different bubbles assigned to um, you know different parts of the game, you know, and then somebody that's kind of over like making sure that like everybody's on the same page, so that way that like. Yeah, somebody wasn't off doing something, and then that like competes with what something somebody else is doing. You know, I'm roughly, you know, I'm yeah, just trying to summarize. Uh, there was another the the best, but it's like also just like emotionally crazy thing. There was a guy there from uh, High Pixel Studios uh, who they uh, they basically started off as as a Minecraft server, and he was talking about like your most valuable player or whatever. And he was talking about this guy named Technoblade who had was super dedicated to their community, went in and like was like just always, always, always playing Minecraft PvP and stuff. And like he would get into these events and just like destroy like some of the most popular streamers and stuff. And everybody was like afraid of him. <laughs> and and he was a huge part of the community, had all of these fans and stuff himself. Everybody knew like the his specific Minecraft um, yeah. like outfit, and then he he got he got sick, oh. and then he passed away. Oh. But they weren't sure. They're like, okay, well he's he's gone, and we think we found an obituary, and we're not sure. And then they like connected with the family and everything. It's like we gotta, you know, is it okay if we tell people we've got to get this you know news out there before somebody else leaks it and does something bad with it right yeah 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 um and and so they had a lot of he shared a lot of cool stuff that like you know that they did with the family but the crazy thing and and for viewers i'm going to put this up here um so they had people go into the server and leave these short little messages just like paragraph long little messages to the family and talking about this guy and how much they meant to him that's incredible and they got so many messages that they had to like essentially print an encyclopedia wow of all of these messages from other players uh and then presented gave that to the family that's incredible of all the people that appreciated technoblade that's really and that was just out there at dice for you to thumb through and look through and there's one that's just like all fan art and stuff that people made wow um so yeah. Uh that That's was a very touching thing to do. That's awesome. Yeah. That was very, very cool, yeah. cool talk. And you know, I sat in for a couple of other talks. Um and I had, had a couple of appointments with people and a couple of dinners. But most of it was like, like I said, like kind of free form. Um nice. I was 
uh, a lot of the times in the evenings, I would end up with kind of like the same same group of guys, which would be like Lucy James and Andrew Goldfarb and uh, one of the guys from Larian, nice. uh, Neil uh, Newbon, who plays Astarian. Yep. Dude is amazing. Ah, that yeah. dude is so caring <laughs> and just like, yeah, just very supportive. And then he does like all this motion capture and directing good and vibes. stuff like that. Yeah, like really good vibes. But again, it's like just sitting around with people and then like other people would come up and talk. And so then it's like, well, well, this so guy. So dice is where it's at. Yeah, it's like you would just talk to every, to anybody and everybody, yeah. you know. And it's, especially now that E3 is fully dead, <laughs> like dice is where it's at. But at the same time, it was it's interesting because there would be folks, like I said, like people that were. T- stuck up in suites and like you know like sony third party people and nintendo third party people that you know you didn't really see them until like the end you know high like, class to like Living later that sweet life well no but they just they had to work <laughs> oh. you know they're just constantly having to work so you don't see them until you know they're able to come down and get a couple of drinks with people you Got know it. that kind of thing roll some dice or until the you know the awards themselves so a lot more people showed up um for that um but yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Um, being at the awards was a different thing because they were like, you know, you guys can say whatever you want, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Spider Man and uh, Larian, uh, or Spider Man and Baldur's Gate were going back to back. I was happy that Spider Man got some love. You know, yeah. it's been getting kind of slaughtered in the, the awards, even yeah. the first one as well. One and two, both kind of. I met the, the, met the guy that plays Miles too yeah, it's uh, cool. afterwards. It's cool. Uh, and, I like but, when everybody wins a little bit. But then, you know, like we were there, you know, and like all the stuff that's been going on with layoffs and everything, like people were talking a lot about that, you know, yeah. and it's definitely weighing on people a lot. You showed me. Um, you showed me it. And um, <laughs> the uh, there's a couple, like, not attributing any of these to anything because they're all just mushed into my head anyway. So there's some, there's some interesting things where like people are like, okay, you know, this will be like the next 12 to 18 months. There was some shit talk directly on shareholders, which I very appreciated. <laughs> well, I'm not, ta- I'm not even talking about the speech yet. I'm just talking about like conversations. <laughs> okay. Right now. But we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. um, but like, you know, people were talking, people were saying that like, yeah, it's going to be probably continue to be bad for like the next year to year and a half or whatever, but it's going to have to recover because it's like, they're still going to, they still need these people. They still have a job to do and they still need people to, to do it, you know, even if they call this a correction or whatever. Yeah. Probably some of the more disturbing sides of that, it, one was that um, to some degree, these things are kind, some of these layoffs are kind of performative. And it's like, oh, this looks good to the sure. shareholders or whoever. Mm. And so they're going to lay off a certain number of people to correct uh, to whatever. But, you know, they need these people, so they're going to end up hiring somebody. And then, like, an even worse version of that is that uh, some of the people that laid off is that, like, when not only did people hire pe- too many people, but they hired people at too high of salaries. Mm. And so they'll hire somebody back, but they won't pay them as much as the person that they laid off. <laughs> so, hey, stuff like that. Yeah. But... um the capper for the week oh, um, yeah. is, like I said, Larry and got up on stage over and over, <laughs> getting awards throughout yeah. the night. And they get up at the end, and they just had this this banger speech. Uh, Michael, who had, like I said, I had spent time with like every night that week. Um, and so I had gotten to know him uh, a little bit throughout the week. And, and actually, the funny thing was like, I didn't even realize who he Again, it's dice. I didn't realize who this guy was. Until like a little while later, I was like, oh, you're the guy that pops up on my Twitter feed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew it's like, oh, he's a guy from Larian. Uh, so he, yeah, he got on stage and said, you know, and really just like, uh, I got a quote here. PC Gamer wrote some of this. It's like, we had a lot of stage time. Others are not so lucky. This is a really human industry and we're really bad sometimes. It's showing developers what they're worth. Um, I want you to know that you're all talented and that you matter and that you are the future of this industry. Don't let that flame be extinguished by our collective mistakes. And then uh, when David, uh, who's the other guy up there in the, uh, in the glasses, he got up there, uh, 
Because this was the day. This yep. was the day that the Embracer quote was going around about boo. everything that we do, we're thinking about our shareholders. Every time you hear that word, you have to two thumbs down and boo. Boo! So, like, we're all, like, chatting with the people, and, like, and, and then when you're in between things, like, you're seeing people, like, tweeting about this quote. And he got out there, uh, and he was, like, because uh, he, he he actually talked not just from a developer angle, but also from a player angle. And he's like, we ask you to pay one price only for the game, and that's it. You can own it for the rest of your life. We don't have shareholders, but we also don't think about them. <laughs> and then he talked about, yeah, it's like the strategy, the best long-term strategy, you know, is just to do right by your players do and build right a community. Do right by your players yeah. and do right by your devs. And yeah, like, by your people. That's it. What Nintendo was just announced as like the richest company in Japan or something like that, right? Crazy. And they've also been kind of the center of a lot of this stuff about like refusing to do layoffs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's really good to 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 have uh, them there and all that interaction and to meet so many people. It's awesome. So many folks, media side, dev side. You know, Rebecca Valentine, Paris, Khalif. Very fun. Uh, so one of the guys from GamesIndustry.biz. Um, just, yeah. Tons nice. Of tons of people. Very cool. Piscatella? I didn't see Piscatella. Damn it. I did not see Piscatella. I did those see... Those MPDs. I did see Pactor. I did not talk to Pactor, but I did see him. Nice. He was there. But, yeah. Jolly. Good times, blood. You have never been to Dice. Yeah. It's it's a good time. Nice. If, if you're ready to talk. One thing my... my my wife had like really prepared for me for because we we're always like, how much do you know? How much do I pack? And I'm like, I just wanted to bring a backpack, just a backpack, nothing yeah. else. Easy. And she's like, laid all this stuff out. I was like, I don't think I can take all this stuff. She's like, lozenges. Like, well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get sick. But okay, I take, I won't just take the case. whole box of lozenges. I'll take one tray of lozenges. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, even though I wasn't sick, you were munching on after those talking all night long. Yeah. I got back to my hotel room and I popped. Those losses and this helped a lot because my I wasn't sick, but my mouth, my my throat was the dryness and the talking and everything. Ricola but, or coldies? Uh, chloroseptics. Got it. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Diane, any any thoughts? Dice. Any any impressions before I go? Um, I went to Dice once in 2007. I was actually looking up my email to figure out when I went because I've gone once. Mm. Um. I remember it being very small. It was not even, it was in Henderson, it wasn't even in Vegas. It was in Henderson, which is a suburb oh, of Las Vegas. It was, yeah. And it was just in like a small convention center. Uh, they had discussion panels with like presenters. And then there was the award ceremony, which was very small. Yeah. Um, and I remember feeling very out of place at it because I was like the, one of the first years. I was doing anything and this was like before I worked at game trailers this was me going through running my own like site and stuff and so I really didn't feel like I belonged there to be to be frank I was like whoa look at all these people here and like that I like recognize and I'm like I'm I'm what 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 business I here? but I think that the back then they just had a problem getting people going for like coverage um, so people were attending as industry or because they were part of like a panel or they were in contention for an award. So they weren't maybe getting as many people. I don't know, but that's really it. Uh, I, I can't really remember more about it. I remember, I remember seeing Reggie there and that was like the big thing was like, right. The, like seeing Reggie and, um, Hi. oh my God, Kojima. uh, no, oh, the original, like the head, three heads at the time for the American branches of Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, all in the same room right, in right. 2000 from 2000. So PS3 era. So, um, Kaz. Oh my gosh. And then what? Kaz Haran. No, I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't see them. Who am I thinking of who did, uh, and also, what's his face? Uh, Jack Peter Trenton. Molyneux. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Peter yeah. Molyneux. Yeah. Um, that was the one before, yeah. Was he selling yeah. snake oil? I was like, no. <laughs> I mean, we didn't know any better back then, right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah what's, what's interesting about that, uh, Damiani, is one of the things I had, had found out there is because um, uh, Zebra Partners was handling all the press, and there was like, there's a name on there that I, I like, I recognized. And I'm like, that name, why does that name sound familiar? And then I, I, I looked it up and realized that, like, 
I didn't know before that like Zebra was basically started by some of the old school Nintendo PR people who used to be like, you know, the ones mm-hmm. always doing interviews and stuff for like IGN uh, back in the day. Um, and uh, and and it's like it's like yeah, I haven't I haven't seen or heard of these people for so long, and it's like yeah, they just they've been over there doing that that stuff, um, and uh, kind of similar to you, what you're saying about feeling out of place. It was like that was also one of the other cool things is is being around folks that were again there for the first time, trying to make connections and actually, you know, helping and trying to you know make those things happen, you know. And so like there's this guy who. Uh, He's an indie dev, and he also has like a you know nonprofit thing he does with like kids in Harlem and stuff, and um, and when he first talked to me, I was like, man, it was like you're coming on like real sales fishy, and I'm like not necessarily here to like you know promote your game or whatever. But some of the some of the like, there was like some weird coincidences to where like he was making like a social deduction game, and his name in the company was was like Outfox Games, and I'm like, but Victoria is working on Among Us, and she used to work with Kit Fox Games, so you've got to meet Victoria just because this is funny. (laughs) And then I had met Justin Woodward, um, uh, like, another day later, and uh, and he does does some similar stuff, um, you know, promoting black creators and all of that, and black voices in gaming. And it was like, oh, it'd be good for him to meet Justin, too. And so it was like just trying to like then it was like a fair amount of the 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 week I was like trying to get him to meet these other folks and it was then like when we were in, in the awards together I ended up uh. s- sitting next to him because I kept we we kept saying you know we kept seeing each other and chatting you know and yeah. it's like and so it's like even though it was like a weird first impression it's like oh it's like oh yeah no we're cool you know <laughs> like and uh, and so we sat next to each other for the awards and then while we were sitting there then Justin Woodward walking right by our table was like hey. I wanted you to meet because I had been talking to both of them separately multiple yeah. times. Of like, I want you to meet this guy, and then finally got them to meet. That's funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, facilitator Bloodworth. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Heck oh, yeah. so good. Um, also, this week, uh, Alan Wake Two is the fastest. Selling game ever for Remedy. Obviously. Having sold over 1.3 million so by the beginning of February. Every game. Sam every Lake. Game's also every game's Also there. Every game's fast. Susie was also there. What up? Sam Lake and Susie. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yep. She was dragging him around the places. I know. They were gambling. <laughs> I felt jealous. I just want to gamble with people. That's all I want. No one answered my call to gamble this weekend. Oh. Just want to, just want to roll dice with you. Is, all. Is That's Susie, all I want to do. I think Susie's actually local, right? Yeah, 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 she's probably busy. Yeah. Just want to just want to roll some dice. I'll teach you. Uh, <laughs> Power Wash Simulator is now getting a Warhammer 40k DLC. No way. There better be blood, or I'm not buying. <laughs> nope, nope. I don't see any blood. I'm not buying. <laughs> well, fraud, I, trash. I don't know. No. Nope. Well, th- th- what's tricky is like, how nope. do you deal with that with with the ratings? Nope. But it's yeah. fraud. I'm out. You need to watch this trailer though, because Ben Starr's narrating and it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, purge the unclean. I mean, there's no blood on that device though. <laughs> what what unclean did you purge? That's a good call, actually. Like, that's a very good. Call. I mean, on, I'm out. Nope. Dried old congealed. Nah, oh, there yeah. was some brown dried brown. Ain't right. Old blood. <laughs> it's not right. Uh, have you seen Kingmakers yet? Nope. Roll this thing. Do Hope- it. Oh my gosh. Damiani, did you see Kingmakers yet? I have seen this. Okay. So yeah, we need Huber's reactions to Kingmakers because this thing is, this is insane, man. So, you know. Whoa. That's not online, is it? (laughs) No, this is not online. Well, it might be, there might be online, (laughs) but you're going to, you're going to get a a rude awakening in a moment Uh, because this game, this goes places. Dude, chivalry. Looks like Chivalry <laughs> Cross Age of Empires. Dude, you ready, dude? You ready for this? this is new Chivalry, this? dude. Yeah. You ready? Massive yeah, like, scale like, battles, like, lots of knights. Wait, what? Wait, oh, what? this is the game where you bring a grenade launcher to <laughs> yeah, like dude. go to baby. Let's go in medieval England. <laughs> what the hell? Genius idea for a video game. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Yes, yeah, dude. You blast the knights with all kinds of modern weapons. Although, when can I play? Uh, that I, I, I don't took know. exception. 
There's one shot where I'm like, even with the gun, he's probably still going to lose to all those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, sniping me. Sniper me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the Terminator poofball gun, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Yeah, players take on the role of an elite task force operative sent back in time to war-torn medieval England with a vast arsenal Skynet. of modern weapons. <laughs> The mission changed the course of history, dude. And Skynet, prevent it the is. apocalypse in the future. I swear, if this game ends with just like it being a Terminator game, <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> the attack helicopters, a good Terminator, motorcycles, yeah. airstrikes. Oh my goodness, dude! I am in. When can I play Blood? When can I play? Uh, just has 2024 <laughs> release. Yeah, I don't think I know. Yeah, Command your troops in battle. What's this gold saucer area, dude? What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> Seamlessly swap between combat and issuing orders at any time for st endless strategic possibilities. Allocate legions of archers, swordsmen, spearmen, and cavalry. Build fortifications. Plan your next move. Uh, and you can solo or team up in co-op. Up Great. to three friends. Great. So. Awesome. Yeah. I am in. Please don't let me forget about that game. <laughs> uh, we got a new gameplay trailer for Plucky Squire. Uh, Wait, what was Kingmaker? Kingmakers. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, th this uh, Plucky Squire is like pretty much straight up gameplay. Dude, goatee. Uh, so we probably won't play the whole thing through, but Goaty. yeah, you got this like really animated Zelda style thing, the, and then you the... hop out of the book, Yep. flip the pages Dude. to look for like another level to jump into. Uh, there's a part later on where he like, there's like a mine cart on a track, right? And you go out and you like tilt the book up. And then it rolls around the side. Uh, and the minecart is what has the portal go in and out of the book. So you wow. hop out of the book and then roll the minecart around and then go back in yeah. to get across that gap. I'm so excited, man. I mean, this 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 looks like it's going to be on the level of a tunic, of a death's door, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Of a, it takes two. This is like best indie game of the year potential goatee nominee potential like everything i've seen about this game is promising yeah hype what's the date on this um when are we playing this damiani i don't know if we know i think it's still just it's this not year. march okay good. oh wait is it march, march? no i said please not March. oh please not march. just 2024 okay yeah. okay okay Yep, ten out of ten in day one. What hype. is what is March though oh, no. is uh, Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story. That's the next uh, interactive uh, documentary from uh, Digital Eclipse. Nice. Heck yeah. So. Yep. Uh, the, the, These are so fantastic. Yeah. And, oh, and I got to spend a lot of time with uh, Chris Kohler as well, who's the one uh, making these behind these the editorial. Very cool, guy. bud. Very cool. Um, and I've known him for ever. So yeah. As long as I've been going to E3s and all of that, yeah, um, twenty something. Pat plus they did years. the Atari one, right? They did Atari Fifty, yep, which yep. was like the first one of these, Legendary. and then they did um, Karateka last year. Yep. So I missed that one. Yeah. So definitely, definitely check these out. They're so cool. The uh, the funny thing is, this is the best. The little tagline they got right now because it's Jeff Minter. Yeah. Minter is coming. <laughs> nice clutch. <laughs> very good. Very good. But yeah, one of these guys who no matter how you feel about the final season, winter is coming is still sick. <laughs> yeah, very famous across the pond, not very well known here. But that's what this is all about. It's about education. Yeah, the learning your history. Blood, I love it so much. It makes me feel good. Uh, we got a full Borderlands trailer. I, I don't mess around with movie trailers on this show because <laughs> of copyright claims. Uh, I don't know if I'm in or out. Did you see this thing? Uh, I saw screenshots. I yeah. mean, I'm not a huge Borderlands fan. The only one I I, I played one and, and two right when they came out. I scrubbed out. I finished one. Never finished two. I liked Tales from the Borderlands. Are you getting Tales from the Borderlands vibes at all? No. Okay. I really like that one. That's my favorite yeah. Borderlands game. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm we'll not see. huge. Yeah. Jack Black, Kate Blanchett. Yeah. I do make Jamie a point. Lee Curtis. I do make a point to see all. Video game adaptations to support my two favorite loves, movies and video games. So, if I hear that it's even okay, I'll probably give it a watch. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Tommyani? You see the trailer? I know you're big on movie trailers. No, I haven't seen it yet. No? No. What are your thoughts on Borderlands, Tommyani? 
Um, I've only played two. Got it. And I made the mistake of playing it solo. Yeah. So I made the mistake of playing as the as Brick with... in the first one. He just uses his fists. It's a game about guns. Oh. Why even make that yeah, character? That... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that what? Like a good choice. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one was a little rough, but uh, <laughs> I I played all of them solo and yeah. then messed around with multiplayer afterwards. But yeah, uh, Huber, yo, Sean Bean is back. I, I, now help me out, Blood, because I got this press release too, mm-hmm. and I was reading through because I was hoping it was a continuation, but it sounds like it's not a continuation. I'm not sure. The way the trailer poses I don't understand. it, it seems like it could be because they're Somebody like... Somebody help me out. They're like, it's every time it seems like he... Because he, he's the undying. Yeah. So it seems like somebody's taken him out, but every time he somehow comes back. Okay. You know? Chat, so. please tell me if this is a continuation or just a re-release of the undying. They do say the return of cherished elusive target mission with the undying. Yeah, so that's... I was like, oh, so it's so. just a re-release? Like... I didn't fully understand, but and, it, and it looks like the same anyways. level too. Like this is where I killed Sean Bean. Yeah, it probably is the same one. Yeah, just coming back, which bums me out because I always wanted, you know, he is the Undying. I always wanted him to come back in a sequel, mm-hmm. elusive target mission, because Sean Bean's the freaking culmination. Yeah. So I don't know. Four weeks starting March twenty second. Sweet. That's if how long miss, you got. If you miss it, definitely hit it up. That's a good one. Uh, and then last one here, uh, Fun Dog Studios, uh, an independent game developer formed by industry v- veterans behind Horizon, Doom Eternal, Killzone, Hawken, Witcher Three, Mass Hawken, Effect. Hawken, dude, remember Hawken? <laughs> Hawken. What a pull! Uh, <laughs> what a pull! They've av- unveiled their new game called The Forever Winter, uh, which they call a tactical survivor, survival, and horror-laden shooter. Uh, they're Talking about putting the tactics back in the tactical shooter. This is the most steam game I've ever steamed, dude, already. <laughs> Squad based mechanics this at the is, forefront. This is steam bait. Challenge you to think strategically to survive. Yep. Yep. Uh, Early access when? It's all cinematic trailer, so I don't really know yeah. until we see it, see it. But yeah, it seems like. Uh, steam early access incoming. Some, some Rainbow Six aspirations. We'll see. Sure. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe a little shades of uh, Terminator Cross Kill Zone, even. <laughs> All right, it's time for Love and Respect. Love and, Love and respect. respect. From See You When I Get There. <laughs> hey, allies. What do you think is the most beautiful and the ugliest console you've ever seen? And has that aesthetic ever affected how you feel about them? For me, I feel like it's influenced me greatly. I never wanted the Xbox because it looked so bad. And genuinely feel like I am holding off on getting a PS5 until they release a new model. Uh, Conversely, my Dreamcast has a place on my mantelpiece because I just love how it looks so much. And the PS1 with with the mini TV display is still the most futuristic, amazing piece of machinery I've ever seen. Uh, Dreamcast is a good one. I love the PS4. I love the way PS4 looks. Um, I would say the ugliest are a cross between the original Xbox and the Wii U. The Wii U, really? The Wii U. It's so simple. Hate it. I'm just bitter. I hate the Wii U. It's my least favorite console <laughs> ever made. <laughs> Damiani, what do you think? The Wii or the Wii U? The Sorry. Wii U. The Wii U, specifically. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very Not good. a fan. Um, I like uniqueness sometimes over just something like it, N64. I I mean, it's obviously going to sound biased coming from me, but I actually liked how the N64 looked. Yeah. It was like extremely unique looking console. Um, I mean, I wish maybe like the, like maybe had more like a matte finish. Um, but in general, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, especially coming off like the boxes that were like the NES and the SNES. It was like, oh, these are just like big clunky boxes. Now we got this like, ooh, these round curved edges. This is Mm. nice. And you know my thing. I don't like 90 degree angles for like edges and stuff. Mm. So it was nice to have those. (laughs) I just want to pet it. Like 
Dude, like the round, yeah, the rounded <laughs> cartridge tops, the round, like little hill nature of the system. Then the front, like the front too, like kind of like stand things were curved as well. The controller ports were rounded. Yeah, it just looked very nice. One, um, one flaw of those cartridges though. Nothing on the spine. You gotta, you gotta pull them out to the see spine. what game it is. So I had these custom oh, cases. Yeah. I had these custom N64 cases where I'd put the game in the instruction manual in the case and then have a, a like a printed out what it is on the side, mm. bud. So I was just locked and loaded. Nice. Yeah. Um, what else? The, the DS Lite. I like the yes. I like the DS Lite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, that that like glossy one. Um, that was pretty nice. Um, Even 3DS is yeah. so good. Yeah, the original 3DS, DS no didn't look too yeah. bad. The yeah. DS goes on the, the OG list. DS, yeah. no, not the fat, not the fat no. DS. Yeah, no, 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 not the fatty. <laughs> the original <laughs> 3DS that. like had that finish that was just like fingerprint magnet. Yep, that's, like, dude, just, I have the like <laughs> Legend like, of Zelda 3DS. Oh, I'd be wiping that thing down every five seconds. I couldn't handle it. Sam. <laughs> Uh, I love, I got to shout out my beautiful black Jaguar. I knew you were oh. going to say that. Boy, is that one attractive system, is it not? It just looks awesome. The, the curves on it, that little half sphere in the middle of it on top and everything. Don, man, I don't want to be a, a lovely system. Don, really I don't want to be a downer, but, okay. uh, you know, when we're talking about this, the controller Uh-oh. is tied Uh-oh. to it. Oh, yeah, that's a You mess. cannot Wait, have the no, console without the controller. Is that true? Because that's not fair. That controller's one ugly. <laughs> <laughs> controller's a train wreck. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a, I want a payphone or something. <laughs> is that like some attempt to like cut out the middleman, the third-party controller company? Seriously. You can't plug a controller in. It's just hardwired. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, any, any, any uglies? Uh, ugly. I was going to say also, I, I do like this old classic Super Nintendo... Uh, yeah, the North American version, I actually like. I like the colored buttons on the Famicom. I always wish we got the we had those back in the day. Yeah, but, but I, we got I actually the, did like we the, got the indent ones. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So it felt better. But uh, I did like how the colors looked on that controller. But I, I ended up kind of liking that purple and gray or whatever it is. For some reason, that system's always nice looking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually, um, yeah, I actually do like the GameCube handle and all. Same. Uh, uh, the the Wii with the freaking gl- glowing disc slot. I love that. And the, the vertical <laughs> positioning. You didn't like it? It looked so cool. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I love yeah, yeah. that glowing blue. Uh, that was so comforting just walking yeah, through your living room and I seeing that thing. Uh, I'll go. I'm going to have to go with the, the Big Mac PS4 Pro. With, with just throwing, just like <laughs> it hammer. feels like it just totally <laughs> yeah. ruined whatever design aesthetic they You're had right. going for. It's like, oh, we're just gonna put another layer on top You're of right. this thing. Like, okay, <laughs> double <agree>. stack. <laughs> You're right. a Wendy's double stack. The OG <laughs> PS4 though is so clean. <laughs> it's so clean. Um, mm, and I, yeah. I don't, I don't have a huge issue in terms of the look of the PS5. The bulge on the disc drive, uh, it's not yeah. great. I just it's it's too big and fragile feeling for me to put in a bag. I put the black so face, I end up face not plates. Using it. The black face plates add a lot. Yeah, I've got maybe the blue just because it kind of like blends into my carpet or something. I don't know, but it definitely looks better. It's just having them flapping around up there at yeah. all. It just, yeah, it feels yeah. like a liability. I agree. If you're gonna put it in anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shout out to the Series X for just looking like the most. Down to business console just, just ever made? <laughs> yeah, just stick a pillar right there. It's all business. I'm into it. It's, a little green it thing. Just bu- you well, that, that bugs the heck out of me. That's the only detail I still it bugs me. Blood. Like, why could they not just put a green light in there? Why do I have to paint those <laughs> circles green? <laughs> it bothers. They did such a nice little melted that like melted effect. We don't need more lights. That's for sure. <laughs> I would love some beans. That would be so out many of people would hate more that, especially lights. putting it sideways. <laughs> Yeah. I would like that. It would be a mess in an entertainment center. <laughs> From Ricky Maru. Ricky Maru. Hey, allies. I have still been thinking about GTA. All I want to do is talk about GTA 6. Every podcast. And console generations. All Grand I want to Theft Auto 5 is the second best-selling game of all time and yeah, has been is. released across three generations of consoles. Mm-hmm. 
GTA 6 may very well do the same. With this in mind, it's hard not to think, why not wait? Why not wait to play it on the future PlayStation no, or whoa, Xbox? No, whoa, whoa, no, <laughs> no. Thank <laughs> not liking this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Day one. Day wait, one. Wait, so Uber, no six months for patches to make no, it better? No, not this, no. No? no. Okay, no, okay, no, no, okay no, not no. this? No, this is, this is immediate. This is, you know, you don't wait. When James Cameron releases <laughs> Avatar in the movie theater, you go. <laughs> this is every time every time a Rockstar game comes out, we talk about this. Every time a Rockstar game comes out, it's them three years in the future giving us a game. They're like, yo, this, these are games like three years from now. Here you go. <laughs> Here's your GTA 6. Straight up. I mean, also, I've I've really enjoyed coming back i mean I, that that to me i know i know like that's a whole nother hour-long podcast talking about like replaying video games and revisiting them mm. whatever but i will say that if you love a game enough and a game has enough of an impact on you a newer better version is a great excuse to revisit it yeah and hopefully they go you know, Last of Us style where it's only like a $10 upgrade or something. If you have to buy a full-on new version, then they bring up a good point. You know, if you're only going to go through a game once, if you can't afford to, you know, double, triple dip on this, 100%, you are correct. I understand. But uh, GTA 6 is the one game where it's like you just you get on that that zeitgeist train you hop aboard and you do not look back and you have no regrets do you can you think of any games that you did wait that's that was their actual question Is cyberpunk it, yeah yeah you, you waited to play on the next generation um technically i believe i did because oh wait okay I mean, so it, it, it came was, out on old gen and new gen it was at the, same the time. ps4 version on the ps5 and it was not great so i was like i'm just gonna wait and then they had the ps5 native version for Cyberpunk, right? Am I right? No. Yeah. No. You, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out on PS5. No, no, no. I'm right. Let me know, chat. I'm cor I'm correct. No, because they <laughs> released it. it yeah, they released it across platform, and then that was the problem: is that the PlayStation 4 version was a mess, and the Xbox One version was a mess. But the people that was were it, playing was on was it the that the PS4 version was somehow superior to PS5 version? If you played the PS4 no. version on your PS5, right, it was like better. There, there was something like that. might have been like something that. about that, but that was different than the PlayStation 5. I don't know, it, dude. I'm telling you. It was I, out on PlayStation 5 from the start. Uh, are you sure? Chat, yeah. please help me, Don. Yeah. Please tell me what they're saying. Please. <laughs> this, sounds, was... this sounds incorrect. Hold on one second. Yeah, live corrections. I'm telling you. It was the PS4 version. I'm telling you. No. No, definitely not. Um... It's okay. This, so either game way, came out day either day. way, Cyberpunk, I waited years to play until it was finally good. And then I, I waited apparently not long enough because then Phantom Liberty and 2.0 came out. And yeah, I don't think. It doesn't look like there See? was a native PS5 version until the next There we go. I was update. there. I was boots on the ground, dude. Trust. <laughs> I was boots on the ground. I promise you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was got... an event for me, dude. It was a life-altering event, Cyberpunk. Let's go. Yeah. So I waited. Unless Bloodworth might be correcting us next week, we'll see. No, <laughs> no, I promise. I promise I'm right. I promise I'm right about this. I promise. Yeah, it looks like most people are yep. saying. Uh, I promise. PS5 native was a year later. Yep. So. Promise. 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 PS5 launched in February 2022. Yep. Red Sky says confirming yep. it. Confirmed. I An waited. Ultimate statistician. That wouldn't have been a year later, but yeah. Okay. It was a while later, so I, I tried it, and it was really sketchy. So I waited on that. So, I mean, yeah, if GTA 6, you boot it up and it's like, whoa, what's going on? Obviously, set it down. But there's no reason to delay it without hearing the hype, seeing the reviews, everything, and then hopping in on your own to validate that. If something is sketchy, then maybe pull the ripcord, find a way to get a refund. But, you know, considering it's Rockstar... Considering we've been waiting over a decade, it's GTA. It's got a pretty flawless track record. Everything's fine. Day one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of those situations where, like, 
we knew it was coming, but it was coming to the next console a little bit later. The only one they like sticks well, in my head was like yeah. Black Flag. Mm, yeah, good yeah. One. Good one. I didn't I didn't wait for Black Flag because I was reviewing it. Yeah. But yeah. It was like we played it first on the 360, and then like when it came out on Xbox One, it's like, oh yeah, look what the grass is and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah that was for a good time. Sh- for sure. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Any other thoughts, Damiani? Yeah, I mean, do you count like Breath of the Wild because it came day and date on two, like Wii U and Switch? It's like, I mean, right, or like Twilight later. Princess, right? So, yeah. So those are like if count. it's day and date, I mean, it, it's fine. It's different. Yeah. It's not like you're I mean, I didn't. I, I don't think I did this ever, but I mean, one, I mean, obviously the ones, the, the late PS4 games that made the jump to PS5, you know, with their enhanced versions, like those probably like... Dude, Last of Us, baby, you know, Last of Us those, remastered. The, those seemed like, well, Last of Us was a decent, like, gap. You know, it wasn't that long. It was like, like more a year. than like a, like year. a year. Yeah. Oh, for, are you talking about two or one? Uh, Last of Us part one, it was on PS3 and then PS4 remastered about a year later. Okay, so it was only yeah. a year. Okay, then I'm misremembering, huh? Yeah, because I was thinking of, you know, the late PS4, you know, exclusives and them getting, like, any kind of, like, bumps and stuff like that. People were just assuming everything. Like, up until, like, like Ghost of Tsushima, I think, like, the mm-hmm. year of. It was like, oh, that's definitely getting, like, a PS5 version, and, right. like, maybe I should wait to play it on PlayStation 5. But then, like, you saw all the videos of, like, PS4. It's like, oh, look, you know, this is pretty good. Then you get, like... <laughs> the loading times on PS5 is like, oh, hi. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> also, another take on this question too. It it's such a it's such a case to case like in the moment because sometimes it's really easy to skip a zeitgeist and skip a game if your backlog is already drowning you, you know? Yeah. If, if something comes out in a few months, and you think there's going to be a better version down the line, and you're over here playing, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, like, it doesn't even matter. You're playing Rebirth, so just wait it out. So I think it all depends on a couple of factors, like what you're playing at the time, what the game is, and the zeitgeist around it, and then also the history of that studio and how they release slash re-release their games. Yeah. Take all that into account. Yeah, because for the most part... Other than this Atlas nonsense, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not generally waiting for the hope of oh, it'll be better. Like there's never a guarantee. Usually, it's it, you know, it's usually good enough shape. You know, mm-hmm. now maybe you wait a month or two for patches or server stuff to yeah straighten out. Because I just I waited for Jedi Survivor and like things yeah. keep coming in and taking Jedi Survivor spot because I started that game and it was like kind of rough and then. It was the combination of like, oh, it's kind of rough. It's not bad. Everything's fine. It's just a little rough around the edges. And then they said, yo, we acknowledge the roughness. We're going to fix it. Right. And then they were working on that, you know, patches for six to eight months. So I was like, okay, I'll wait until that's good. And then like more games kept coming out. And, and, you know, so I got to go back to it. But that's another example. It's like, wait a little bit, see what the devs are saying about it. Like. Yeah. If they acknowledge it. So it's a good question though. Different situation. Yeah. yeah. Hard to skip that zeitgeist. Do not skip the GTA six zeitgeist though. Back to the original question. <laughs> Do not wait. <laughs> All right. From uh, Andy Schreiner. Uh hey allies, with Shadow of the Erd Tree looking like a beefy expansion to an already massive main game in Elden Ring. And Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty capped a major redemption arc after its launch. What other games are se- that are several years old would you like to see be given a big single-player DLC expansion over the next year? Witcher 3, let's go again! <laughs> let's go again! <laughs> uh, and then if there's any, like, pie-in-the-sky gameplay elements you'd want. Any changes. Uh, Witcher 3 Farming Simulator. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, let's, yeah, let's make it a reality, Huber. Another one to get you stoked for, because it's never too late. <laughs> Resident Evil 3 Remake. Let's Yee- get that X. Yo, dude. <laughs> Yo, you win. That's it. Yeah. That's it. The shadow drop at Capcom. Just so, one day. Uh, we uh, uh, we uh, had to finish update. four first, but uh, uh, we decided to go back. Damiani, dude. <laughs> 
Yeah, we just made so much money off four remake, oh. you know, and it's gonna be a while. Like, we're just gonna drop this for free. Here you go. Free update. The, the Marvin files, dude. Let's go. Mm. Well, Damiani, you know, we're talking oh. about the, you know, what's what's coming the rest of the the year for the Switch. Waiting on the Switch too. What about that Mario Odyssey? Mario DLC Odyssey. We never got. Dude, God. <laughs> That would be funny. That would be funny. Seven years later. Here you go. I mean, <laughs> better this than this October. The Mario Kart. Wait. This October, and it's the freaking Boo World, dude. Let's go. 3D World, Mario <laughs> Kart. It's not unprecedented. I would, I would laugh and also <laughs> open my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> but, I also, but I also hope it's just like an online mode. It's not New Kingdom. So it's just like a new online mode where you can run around and see other players mm-hmm. in your kingdom. No. And that's it. No, no, no. 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 New no. Kingdoms, for no. sure. Yeah. Yep. New kingdoms, new kingdoms. Luigi's Mansion, Cross, <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey. Let's go. They're just going to like mirror the existing ones and call them special worlds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's time for bets. We've gone on long enough. Uh, this week's bet Final Fantasy VII Rebirth out next week. Some of us haven't played it yet, but even those that have will not have much of an advantage here. And I gave all the information that I had as well. Mm-hmm. I just want to get that out there. We're going to pop that game open, and I want to know how many words will be in the first tutorial pop-up. I didn't remember, but I gave the information I had. Huber. I said centipede. 34. 34 words. 34. Ooh, Okay. Damiani, the pompous cocker spaniel. I said 100 words. 100, 100 words. Dude, this guy reviewed it. <laughs> Fuck, man, I'm low. Dom, oh, I fashionable just, like, vanities. <laughs> I'm going to look up the answer now after 56. I put my things. kind of wanted to do 156, but... Gabby, our optimistic rat. That's one. That's a good guess. I think. Five. Oh. That's a good one. I swear, blood, if you undercut me. Which puts me at the low 24. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to start writing go. my bets down in the other room. I'm going to tell. I'm, I'm, it's a new thing. Yep. I don't know how that makes it. A new thing. How does he undercut me every time? <laughs> every time, this guy. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, last week's bet. <laughs> Uh, right before the podcast, Isla checked how many viewers Skull and Bones had on Twitch. A day before the official launch, that game had 14.4 thousand viewers. And Isla asked how many viewers it would have this week, right before we shot on February 22nd. Huber yep. bet 12,200. Mm-hmm. Damiani bet 2,000. Don bet 9,200. Gabby bet 3,001. Isla bet 19,000. And Janet, for Gabby, bet 27,650. The answer, when I checked before we started shooting, was 6,000. Oh. Giving Gabby her first win. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, Gabby. SMB. So uh, Gabby, get up here. Optimistic rat, one point on the board. You got to make a noise. S and P. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm making a noise? Yeah, optimistic, optimistic rat, rat, one. <laughs> that sounds a lot like a stealthy <laughs> centipede, stealthy three. Centipede. <laughs> he can't, he's laughing too much. We'll, we'll give him a minute. And the pompous cocker spaniel with two. <laughs> Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Uh, Patreon is how we are funded, how we are supported, uh, is through folks like you uh, who enjoy uh, watching this show every week, uh, who enjoy it. When we go crazy long, uh, yeah. talking about uh, wandering around casinos and uh, playing Pacific Drive and Final Fantasy and Final everything else. Fantasy Week, Bloodworth. Heck yeah. Gotta go long. Nintendo Directs, all that <laughs> stuff. If, if you like that stuff, uh, consider 
what that's worth to you uh, on a monthly basis and head over to Patreon. We have rewards at different levels. At $5, uh, you get this podcast two days early. You get two bonus love and respect questions. You get to submit to love and respect so you can put in your questions and your games and whatever else you come up with. And you get to get in our Discord uh, where you can vote on top tens and meet other people in the community. Uh, at $10, uh, you can join our contributor tier uh, for stream team, uh, which you get to vote on one of our streams once a month, uh, as well as our community showcase. Uh, and then $25 and up are all of our different producer tiers. There's some fun things up there. If you if you can stretch to 100 uh, Brandon Jones will read some crazy nonsense. He's been reading Guild Wars stuff uh, so for y- years now. So He's sick. been reading Gil- Guild Wars romance novels uh, for uh, Bradley Spees. So, yeah, uh, every month. Uh, that is a delight that comes through my inbox. Uh, anyways, uh, then our platinum producers uh, get a shout out on this podcast each and every week. Uh, this month's shout outs go to Javawabs, Elthanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and Raymond Wheeler the Third. Shout, Shout out. out. Shout out. Ah, uh, we promoted both of these things already, but just to throw them in there one more time so you don't forget that Final Fantasy VII review is up there. Over 11 minutes long. It's a good video game. Pretty meaty review. Holy shit. But it's a good video not game. Not spoiling. Nope. nope. Not spoiling that thing. No. Nope. Tell me how he knows. Not the longest. He knows the way. <laughs> not the longest. Definitely um, not. Definitely not. I don't know whether we could say anything, but we have another thing that we shot this morning that is very cool that you should look out for next week. Maybe by the time the next podcast is uh, on Twitch or maybe, th- th- let's say Thursday, Friday. Somewhere in that ballpark. I was nervous. Somewhere in there. Keep an eye out. I get nervous. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm definitely gonna be doing some teasing on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Damiani, as you said, you have a solo queue coming up this Sunday. Sunday. Yep. Uh, Sunday with uh, guest Rogers Bass. We're gonna be talking about the Switch Two delay announcements and the aftermath of the Nintendo Direct. Like what we think is going on with Ni- with Nintendo and like what do they got for the rest of the year possibly and if Switch Two really is probably being delayed and why. You know, the big why question. So, um, just so because. I didn't have to dress up as Wario. They were like, oh, we'll wait. Yeah, I think they heard about that bet. Yeah. <laughs> Someone in there was like, I really don't want to see Huber dress up as Wario. <laughs> That's just going to put me in a foul mood. It's going to cause the next, you know, Switch 2 3D <laughs> Mario game. Like, it's going to impact its development. <laughs> let's not. Let's do something about that. Just hold off a Nip few it in months. the butt now. <laughs> yeah. Just hold off. Like, what's what's another two, three months? Like, come on. It's okay. It's still in our same fiscal year. It's fine. Should have made it paid. fiscal year. I screwed up by not saying yeah. their fiscal year. Uh, that was the mis- Calendar year was fiscal. the mistake. That's fair point. Fiscal Nintendo year. loves their fiscal years. Fair point. <laughs> we want to we want to double down humor fiscal year. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good on that. <laughs> Gabby, double or nothing. <laughs> Gabby won that bet. So Gabby, you get to shout out anything or anyone that's on your mind this week. Get the final word, and you get to sign off with your trademark. Sign off. Um. Shout out to uh, true crime documentaries. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing? <laughs> you get a final word. Uh, so. My final word is uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to forever change my life in the way Red Dead 2 did. What's the last thing? <laughs> then you sign us off. My podcast sign off. Nothing is true. Everything is permitted. Get the dream egg from the Moogle Chocobo Carnival to unlock the Master Assassin's robes for Noctis. Good night, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Juicy Bursts.